Welcome everyone to a very special Buried in 12 film review. Last week, we went to see Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Scotty? An all new installment, the first of these standalone films, they call them. If all of the standalone films are like this, uh, we're in for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> you sound okay, so, so enthused. Let's... You sound so excited <laughs> for them. <laughs> do, I, do I sound excited? I, you, know, you really do. Trying my acting. Maybe oh, I can be oh. in the next film. A lot of people have already reviewed it. We're coming in a little bit late, but well, I mean... A lot of a lot of people have already reviewed it. Uh, people with millions of subscribers and stuff, so it's not really those aren't real reviews. Like if you get that one sort of vaguely Mexican guy who does movie reviews, he doesn't actually talk about the movies. He kind of just yells, and his friend sits oh, yeah. next to him and looks bored, shitless. And I no tried real... to watch one of his videos once, but uh, let's not just start bashing other YouTubers. Oh yeah, let's yeah, talk no, no, about no, no, start. <laughs> Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Yeah, a lot of uh, film reviewers that I respect, at least, hmm. have. Um, given a different view to what most of most people have been thinking and yeah. that is that the film is not that good because i wasn't sure if we'd be doing this or not i we did wait and i also yeah. haven't been watching those reviews that you're talking about yeah well i've read a, quite a few comments online you know just on reddit and stuff like that yeah. and a lot of people seem to think it's amazing really people think it's better than uh the force awakens oh how, it's better than... how did the boycott go what boycott Oh, uh, the conservatives wanted to boycott it because apparently it's anti-Trump or something. <laughs> well, good luck with that, because <laughs> it's making. I'm pretty sure it's going to make a billion dollars anyway. Some people are saying it's better than The Force Awakens. Some people are saying it's the best film since Empire. Eesh. I heard that at work today. Like my boss said that, and I was like, wow. "Well, she hasn't seen it, but she just was, you know, parroting what she heard." And I was like, "No, probably not." Yeah. So let's talk about Rogue One. A Star Wars story. I feel like it's very contentious at this point. Not completely and spoiler free. Give... Not completely spoiler free impressions, but just as a just generally, in case anybody hasn't seen it, just give a vague idea. So we'll it. just be a little bit general at first, and then we can d dive deep into the spoilers later. Yeah, yeah, and say every little thing that happens in the movie. Okay. Yeah. I had fun doing it with Force Awakens. I don't mind doing this once a year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as long as the films are okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to keep wasting my money. No. <laughs> Okay, yeah. well, first off, this isn't a waste of money. It's, it's an okay film. It's like, an alright film, yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it yeah. in the sense that I was in the cinema and, and you know, I had popcorn. And... If you're in doubt about whether it's worth watching, then at least do it in the cinema where it will have some sort of impact. It'll have plenty of... Yeah, don't wait until you have to buy yeah. a Blu-ray or something. Yeah, don't wait for the... Um, movie, yeah. Do you want me to start with my impressions, or do you want to Absolutely, start? I actually... Because we haven't really talked about it too much, except for on Skype, sort of sarcastically. I would like to l know what you think of it. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like we've got the same kind of point of view. We haven't really talked much about it. Though. No, no, not exactly. We Just sarcastic little jokes and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I feel... Okay. Well, I feel like visually and auditorily... Hmm. Sounds a bit rude, but... Uh, it's a... It's... You know, it's a fun experience. It's good to watch. You know, it's like... If you just let yourself, you know, fall back and just let the movie jerk you off, then it's a... It's, it's a good time. Yeah, mm. but uh, if you focus more on the story and the pacing and um, the characters, <laughs> which is a lot of the, you know, it's a lot of what makes up a film, uh, I didn't really enjoy it that much. You know, it's uh, okay. I'll, I'll, my 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 main issue with this is the characters because there's a whole ragtag team of people these rough rebels you know it's not like star it's not like a regular star wars film where it's you know nice and optimistic it's like a war movie yeah a lot of people are saying this is the first film in the uh franchise that really you know admits that it's a war movie <laughs> there's been a you know there's been like battles on the ground and like battles of the woods movies and out of the play yeah your ships fighting there's in space a lot of war yeah, in this... yeah. actually there's a lot, a lot of war in, in star wars actually. already i don't think they've really broken any new ground here but uh, okay no, no, there's a lot of war in Star Wars, and I feel like calling this, like, the first war movie out of the entire b bunch is, uh, very disingenuous. Anyway, so the characters, I, I didn't give a shit about any of them. I had to look up the names of the characters after I saw the movie, which is not good, because you're supposed to learn who they are during the movie. It doesn't actually exist, but let's say there is a Star Wars name generator out there somewhere. 
I'm sure there is a Star Wars name. It's working well. overtime with this new film because they had to introduce, say, six new people or whatever, or <clears throat> had these names to make up. And I don't know, it might need a bit of refinement because it's starting well, to I can spit see out some... I can see seven new people on the poster, so... It's starting to spit out some curious ones. I mean, the, my favourite's Chirrut Imwe. Chirrut Imwe? I think that's you didn't it. Like a... Do you think they actually said that in the film? Because I don't remember it that. Sounds like a marmot, or ferret, or some sort of small... Something you would carry under your arm and, you know, feed little bits of carrot to. Yeah. It's not what I like even better than Chirrut Imwe, Scotty, huh? is Baze Malbus, his best friend. Oh, is that the name of the guy with the... <laughs> Here's the thing, they're both... The big repeater? Yeah. They're both Asian, right? Yes. But to be the longer I watched the movie, the less the big guy looked Asian to me and more like sort of a Mexican janitor with the backpack vacuum cleaner, like walking around <laughs> after him. Hey man, you want me to do your room when you were, <laughs> when yeah, you're done he's like here? walking through, yeah. So you got um, blind Asian with the with the stick. The force is my ally and the ally is my force. And the other guy's this is what he says. I love the force. The force is in me. <laughs> <laughs> I love the force and the force. Isn't that what he says? Yes. Yeah, okay, anyway. yeah. <laughs> getting ahead yeah, of the ourselves. character names are, the character names are stupid. And I didn't care about any of them. I didn't even care about oh, fucking well, Forrest Whitaker, even though, you know, he's the most fun. When yeah. they when they slam the squad down on you, when they do such a bad job of introducing them at such high speed, you've only got the length of the movie to memorize them all. I thought Bodhi was the guy, Chief Oberon. Oh, Cassian Andor? Yeah, I thought Cassian Played Andor. Played by Diego Luna? <laughs> I thought he was Bodhi. I got so confused. I'm listening to the dialogue in the movie, and all of a sudden I realized... We're all talking actually... about Bodhi, and, and then the little... Uh... Fucking uh, Danny Pudi guy walks up and <laughs> confused the hell out of me. I mean, they should have at least given Bodhi the most earthy, re relatable name to the guy that was actually, you know, the movie is supposed to be about. The main characters, yeah. Yeah. The last third of the film is fun to watch. Yeah. But um, leading up to it, it's just kind of a track. Anytime but, there wasn't like uh, well, nostalgia being shoved down my throat, right. I was bored. It was just a very difficult first half of the film to get through because they do something they've never done in Star Wars before. They have on-screen lettering to tell you which planet's which. They do this with about four planets, I think. <laughs> it felt like five. And they do it really before they need to. Um, I think within the first ten minutes they show you about four different planets and yeah. tell you all the names. It's like, I, okay, I read a name, but like yeah. that's not going to stick with me. <laughs> I, mean, I don't they've, care. They've never needed to do that before. And when they do introduce a planet, I mean, let's face it, even the worst Star Wars films do it better. Like, you've got the guy saying, Coruscant, the entire planet is one big city. I mean, even that! The entire planet is one big city. That's all I need to know! <laughs> I, don't need to do, I don't need anything else! The, the, the name... And the... Or you want you want Dex to say, Oh, it's a Kamino Dart! There's a big uh, ocean planet! It's Kamino and Saber the, Dart! And then there's there fish! The ocean <laughs> planet, and you know where it is. That was probably the jerkiest part of the movie to get through. It was just the start. The way they were... Or how do they introduce... Oh, sorry. Oh, oh. Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop touching the microphone. How do they introduce Jakku in uh, The Force Awakens? Well, you know, I haven't watched it. Who, who says Jakku first? It's got to be um, jo John Bodega. It's John Bodega, and he probably says, I don't want to go back to Jakku. Yeah, that's going to be but the anyway, first time they... Well, it, I don't know. You hear the name, and you associate it with the planet, and then that's how you introduce the planet. You don't put a little subtitle down. Yeah. And... You know, it's just fucking... Because the planets don't matter yet. Like, they're introducing us to the squad and letting us know where all these people are, but they don't matter yet, so we don't need to know where they are. So yeah, just that just that by itself kind of just threw me out of the movie instantly. Not yeah. not the fact that there wasn't a you know, Star Wars crawl at the start. Yeah. Or, you know, they didn't... <laughs> yeah, anything <laughs> or, like that. Although... The fact was that they were just giving me irrelevant information at the start, and it you, was really weirdly paced. If you haven't seen it yet, what happens is you get six minutes of Star Wars as the teaser, and then you get the... Star background and boom, boom, not the Star Wars music, but something similar, sort of like what you ba, get. Ba, ba, da, ba, da. <laughs> I mean, I think every other fake Star Wars theme has been better than the one that Michael Giacchino wrote. Even Spaceballs had better music than this movie. I didn't um, like the music; it didn't work for me, to be honest. To be I didn't clear. really mind. Like it kind of just sounded it was vaguely a, Star Warsy, and it was like it was like I think I've said this to you already. It was like neural network Star Wars music. Basically, what they did was they showed a computer all of yeah. the Star Wars music and said, okay, write more. And it, you know, it was like a neural network thing. It's just, they just... It they was gave it to that Microsoft thing that it gives you a backing track when you see yeah. it. There was like yeah. a couple of good bits, but... Yeah. I think this guy really should just stick to writing music for The Incredibles. Some of the best Pixar music, uh, besides... Uh, exactly. No, he's not crap. He wrote the music for... Somebody else told me about this. Uh, Medal of Honor. So, you know. Guy's not shit, huh? but... Yeah. Star Wars is just a very high bar, and, um, you know... 
We're not really ready to get rid of John Williams just yet, I don't think. Is he alive? Yeah, he's alive. He's alive, but... You know. There's a few other things that just kind of threw me out of... A lot of the nostalgia hmm. just kind of was very forced and just kind of threw me out of the film and just didn't... You know, I, I didn't really appreciate it as much as I probably should have. The very... Yeah, it's a very good service. And, you know, they just pull down your pants and they just jack you right off in the cinema. <laughs> they, they do it for free. It's, um... <laughs> it, just, it left a bad taste in my mouth. I just couldn't really sit back and enjoy the film. Yeah. I because some, yeah. I also couldn't uh, relate with any of the characters. <laughs> no, yeah, I, uh, I'm more or less good with you saying. I mean, I have a couple of ideas about some of the fan service, but we'll get into that once we actually start talking about what happened in the movie. You know, spoilers. All right, so I've given my general impressions. Scotty... Uh, go ahead. What, what, how did you feel about this film, generally? I felt like I was sort of doing it at the same time as you, but I'll, I'll give you some general impressions. Um, yeah. It's the kind of movie where I really was just more comfortable watching it and enjoying it in the moment. As soon as I walked out of the cinema, I was kind of going, ah. And, and, and that's not why you go to the movies. You're supposed to go there and switch off and just enjoy the thing. But immediately, as soon as yeah. we're out of our chairs, I'm thinking... You know, this was pretty stupid. That was kind of dumb. And uh, what, the hell, what the hell was that all about? You know, it's really. I mean, in spite of myself, I, I was immediately analysing it and really thinking, "Geez, was that actually any good, or did I just waste my time?" Well, <laughs> see, I only enjoyed it in the in the uh, last third of the film. Yeah. Did you uh, Did you enjoy yourself in the rest of oh, it? Look, honestly, I, look, look, I was working overtime to give the movie the best chance to just be itself and just say listen Trying really hard to enjoy it. this yeah. is going to be a different kind of movie so let let's just give the new presentation a chance to succeed but it totally yeah, wasn't yeah. in the first hour i was just getting annoyed just be like the, the actual thought that goes through my head and i know this is a cliche but we were about 40 minutes in and we were watching some scene when they're on the planet sneaking around trying to find forrester whitaker or something and i yeah. i did sort of think to myself are we in the vicinity of a point yeah. Which is from somewhere, I know, but that's the actual thought that was in my head. One thing I find funny about this film is oh, yes. I've, never, I've not heard anyone call Forrest Whitaker's character by its name. <laughs> Everyone just calls him Forrest Whitaker. It kind of feels like we've been in this motherfucker for a very, very long time. Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> Saw Guerrero. Well, we saw Guerrero, and... Uh, saw Guerrero. I would say see Guerrero. He's pretty great. He's a, he's a, good, he's a good little... Uh, I mean, just... I knew he was going to be funny. Forrest Whitaker's, Forrest Whitaker's character. We've been laughing about him in all the trailers. I've been waiting for months to see how this was going to pull off on the screen. Yeah, I mean, we thought he had a funny voice in the trailers, but he just got even better. And I mean, I was, I, you know, I actually, I didn't say it to David, but I was thinking to myself, David's going to want to enjoy this movie. He's already told me to shut up about six times. I'm going to try not to laugh at Forrest Whitaker. And then when he starts... Well, I was talk- trying to enjoy. I was, tr- I was trying overtime to enjoy. I did tell you guys to shut up a few times. Hey, I thought Because Nancy po- started guessing the actors. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're three minutes into the movie and Nancy's like, is that is that Ben Mendelsohn? Is that... Uh, full- <laughs> is, <laughs> is that the guy from the... Th- uh, <laughs> Wait till the credits! <laughs> Wait till after the movie. We're trying to watch the fucking start of a glorious bastard here. <laughs> and anyway, yeah, Paul's next to me starting up and, you know, obviously... Uh, yeah, I was stuck between the three worst people I could have been. I wish I was over at uh, Tina and my mum. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I, I did try to shut up, and I you know, actually, you know what? You didn't hear all the things I didn't say. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I was pretty. Quiet. You should just be. Lu- you should just be lucky. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, listen. General impressions of the movie. I mean, visually, it ticks a lot of my boxes because I'm a retro kind of guy. I'm I'm out of date. I like the old stuff and. In the past five years, I'll call it VHS retro, but there's a kind of retro where I knew it was going to happen. I tried to get onto it with Malone, and I failed because Kung Fury beat me there. But um, now that VHS and, and the 80s is retro, and that look yep. of computer screens and old graphics and stuff, they've really learned how to do that well, like with the game Alien Isolation. Just the industry in general, they're all kind of cottoning on how to do it properly now. And Stranger yep. Things and things like that. And you see little touches of that on this with the little computer screens and shit. And yeah, to, to be honest, I, and I'm, it makes me a basic bitch, but I enjoy that. I do get off on that look. So visually and stuff, whenever I'd see something like that, I'd be like, oh yeah. But then it'd be weird because then it would pull you into a section that's like a new movie. Um, basically, anytime they, actually... anytime yeah. they did anything that wasn't Star Wars in this, it just felt like not Star. <laughs> like, <laughs> but then you'd see an I... old computer screen and be like, oh yeah, Star Wars. And then you, so you kind of felt like you're watching two movies in that sense. Yeah. 
I was about to make a point, but I'll wait. So uh, just keep going. Oh, well, we'll write it down. I don't want you to forget. I don't want you to. Uh... Yeah, no, I won't forget. Okay. Well, you should write it down because I really don't want you to forget it. Okay, I'll write it down then, Scotty. <laughs> you got a little notepad? I've got a notepad, but I haven't been like consciously keeping notes. It's just for uh, in case I forget something. Okay. Is that general? What do you think about all you? the characters? I mean, what do you think about all the characters? Uh, Scotty, listen, you like the characters? Okay. You're, you're good? Well, I mean, you knew this already. I wasn't looking at the poster and thinking, this is the team I really want to be in there stealing the Death Star plans. So everything looks so dirty and depressing and dark. Yeah, and but isn't that what they were going for? You know, the, the, well, that's the kind of film they're trying to make. They're because, trying to make a war film, Scotty. I mean, no spoilers. This basically is supposed to lead into the original Star Wars movie. So it's not even a standalone movie. They fucked up there. And yeah, they they were. I hear a lot of people saying it. it's like, oh, it's finally its own contained story, and like well, look, it doesn't rely on any other films. It's like, yes, it does. It really isn't. <laughs> it really does. It's um, um, it's there's a word I want to remember because I've been trying to remember it all day, and I just remembered it. <laughs> it's not, and it also you get the sense that five minutes after Rogue One ends and you go into A New Hope, they suddenly remember to turn the lights on and like wash their clothes. <laughs> yeah, because the true. rebels all had like pretty white looking shirts in the original. Yeah, I do feel like... Well, who dressed all these rebels that were actually following in this film? Because they're not dressed like anything... I mean... Like any other people in the in the franchise. They're not the worst. Uh, like, they're, they're just, like... they got leather straps all over them. And when the you really fucking want Bodhi's shitty... got these stupid goggles. And it's like, nobody is dressed like that. I'm glad they didn't go too far into, like, you know, the We Will Rock You musical? Or X-Men 3? You know when you see, like, the standard oh. mutants in the background? That yeah, kind yeah. of shit. I'm glad they didn't go down that road. But... It Same. wasn't great. And, and really, I mean, just the two Asians. <laughs> no, they, they were all right. They were a she good team. Scotty doesn't like the Asians, all right? No, no. Well, <laughs> Point I mean, Paul made it, Paul tried to talk about... Paul tried to talk about... He's there. He felt, you know, in the car on the way home, Paul was talking about Attack of the Clones and how mm -hmm. the New Zealander people made the film feel more ordinary and of this earth because you're watching Star Wars and all of a sudden you have this plonker from play school running around talking in his New Zealand accent and it's just so plain and boring and stupid. And well, I, I think it's just because we're we know him as the guy from Play School, you know, yeah. Jay Jay Lagaya. It really <laughs> does make it very terrestrial, and I mean, I kind of felt that way about the Asian dude because not only is he an Asian dude, but he also happens to be a master martial artist, and it, and it kind of that pulled me out of the movie. It felt yeah, it felt I, a little too normal. But I just want to cover my ass and say that it was a very good bit of uh, martial arts. Like it's nice to see someone just fighting with a stick and not doing wire work and just sort of skating, skateboarding past the camera and yeah, yeah, yeah. for no reason. That was all cool. It was very well done. And uh, He was also a funny character. He has that line about uh, him being blind. Well, you want to jump into spoilers now? You, you want to get in there? I mean, have, have I more or less covered my base? I mean, I you know, I, I can't get too much more specific. Without I feel like we had the same experience, really. I mean, we were sitting yeah. right next to each other. We saw the same film. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people saw the same film and thought very different things. So. <laughs> well, we, we can start talking more specifically now. So if there is a spoiler section of this video, we'll put a thing on the screen and sort of just say... Starting now. Spoilers. All right. Okay. You want to go first? All these characters, completely fucking boring. The only characters that I like... I'm, I'm getting real now. Okay. The real talk. Look, put... Forget spoiler time. Put real talk on the Real talk. This is where we actually stop playing nice and we take off the kid gloves and we put on the big ones. All right, George. Here comes the criticism. <laughs> I hate the names of every fucking character in this film. Why? <laughs> Why are they not... Like, you know who the main character was in A New Hope? Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Why doesn't it... anyone have a normal name anymore? <laughs> These were getting to know you prices. They were lit, they were little finger first, and then they were going to work the whole fist in. I feel, yeah, I feel like over the years, they've been making up these Star Wars names. Yeah. And it's gotten to a point where it, they just keep making Star Wars names. And it's getting further and further. It's like playing Chinese Whispers. It's just further and further away from like a normal name. Yeah. I've got a list of the characters here, right? Okay. Well, it's like I said to you before. It. Bodhi. Bodhi is pretty relatable. Why didn't they give that to the? Uh, I like Bodhi. Yeah, the rogue, <laughs> the guy. I like Bodhi as <laughs> man. But let's go through the the character list. Spanish right? Han Solo. Jean Urso. It feels like somebody's saying Jan also, but like the show would squish in their face. Well, it sounds so like what's a, what was the chick from the games? Jan uh, Jan Ors. Jan Ors. Was it deliberate, do you think? Or? Uh, no, because they made it such a stupid name. Like, like why, <laughs> why not just make it a good name? I don't know. Director Krennic? Was that his name? Uh, Orson Krennic. Well, man, we've been pretty, pretty damn picky if we can't handle Krennic. I mean, that's, you know, it sounds like a villain's name. Oh, look, there's a lot of stupid names in the original 
movies as well. Like, I'm not saying that Star Wars names are all stupid. Don't yeah. you wish that Director Krennic had been played by Dick Jones from Robocop? <laughs> this is this is my Death Star. I'm in charge here. Diego Luna, the uh, the main Diego? male actor. Diego's in this. <laughs> that's his, that's the guy's name. That's the actor's name. Oh, okay. His name is Cassian Andor. Oh yeah. See, yeah, did anyone say that in I the film? I forget that every time we don't. Every time we go five minutes without saying, it, I've forgotten his name again. Cassian Andor, because it's a stupid name. I already went through these mental gymnastics with The Force Awakens because what happened was I'm watching the new Star Wars for the first time in how many years, and I've got to kind of go, do I just like the old names because I'm used to them? We've got we got Ray. I mean, that's a nice normal name. Ray, Finn, Poe. Those are all monosyllabic. Ooh, that's a good one. I don't know if I like them because they're monosyllabic, or I just like the characters better. Well, first of that's all, they, the were, issue. they were better actors doing a better job with the material that we're given. I mean, I mean that's, that's uh, really that, my yeah. That's one thing I got really annoyed with with people saying Force Awakens was crap. It's just a JJ ripoff. It's like they were really selling the actors short because the actors were just like miles beyond what was in the prequels, if nothing else. Like they were just committed and just trying and just doing better. I don't like sounding gay, but you know. Ooh. The actors in The Force Awakens were leagues better than the people <clears throat> in the prequels in Rogue One. You know. That's just what I said, aren't you saying I'm gay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, look, the actors were just better in Force the Awakens. Dameron I, and I, Finn. And, yeah. I think you're really in denial if you can't uh, see that. That's really my issue with people who are saying that The Force Awakens wasn't as good. Like, this, I'll admit the story in The Force Awakens, like the Starkiller base and stuff. Yeah. Starkiller base is just fucking stupid. Oh, look. As Especially as, in hindsight. As like far as comparing, comparing these two movies goes, it's it's pretty simple, and I'm surprised nobody's saying this. Force Awakens is better, but that's because it's copied its homework. Whereas the Rogue One, I haven't got an analogy f for that half of it, but you know they did try and do something different. It's just not as good. Rogue One ate their homework, and they're trying to wing it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. They, 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 By they yeah. yeah. No, no. Just all the actors in Force Awakens were so much better. Yeah. They than... just were. The people in this film, the people in this film had no chemistry at all, and that's why I like The Force Awakens better. Even if the story is crap mm. in The Force Awakens, which it, it, parts of it were, parts yeah. of it were crap. Yeah. But at least I like the characters. I can watch a two-hour film with a iffy story if I like the people that are in it. Yeah. I can't watch an iffy story with people that I have no connection with at all. Yeah. Yeah. They missed the boat there, big time. Yeah. Anyway, um, Pig see, like, the only characters that I really liked in Rogue One mm. were the robot, which was a very just straight comic relief. Yeah. Had really no personality. Well, the, just... sim the simple stuff just works better, yeah. Just keep it simple. Have Alan Tudyk walk around and say, and there's plenty more where that came from. Bang. They had a list of, like, uh, lines to react to and just have a very literal reaction to this line and make it slightly amusing. And that's all he did. And somehow he was one of the most compelling characters, and I was the saddest when I saw him die. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I felt more when he died than uh, um, anyone else in the yeah. film. <laughs> Any other person? I feel the damn uh, thing. The only probably. other, the only other character that I liked really. Okay, okay. There were three characters I liked. Yeah. K two S O, played by Alan Tudyk. I liked um, Chirrut Imwe, played by Donnie Yen, the blind Asian guy. I liked him for the first. 10 Sorry. minutes he was in the film. Yeah. Because he was being funny and he was being cool martial arts. Yeah. And then as soon as he started going, I like the force, the force is cool, the what force is, is in me, what's I'm his with mantra? the force. Yeah, yeah, the force is with me and I'm in the force. No, I can't That's remember. what he said. That's, he said it 20 he, times and I don't remember. There was a scene where he said it a fucking million times in a row and it was getting really annoying. It was like, what the fuck? What is this going on? It got old quickly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was he martially active at any point after the first beatdown in the alleyway? Like, he didn't help on the he plan. Beat, he jumped out of a bush and beat up two stormtroopers, and then for the rest of it, he was holding it like a fucking bow and arrow, and he kept missing. Yeah. It was the biggest fucking gun that, they, that any of them had, because he shot down a fucking TIE fighter with it before. And he didn't hit a single thing with it. <laughs> this is a related question. In the final act of the film, he didn't hit a single thing with that fucking gun. You've seen... Star Trek Beyond by now because I know you hadn't seen it for a while I have seen Star Trek Beyond yes. is it just me or have movies forgotten how to do showdowns that were watchable because in this movie instead of there being any kind of interesting heist to get the, the plans which is the thing they're after they're after the Death Star plans yep 
it can be that kind of they're at the base and they're gonna get in the tower and there's no real cleverness or, or fun in the in the sneaking in to get there. And in Star Trek Beyond there was like um oh the big black bastard alien. He's in the tower and he's got a thing and now Kirk's floating through the tower and then and that was kind of crap too. Is it just me or is it, are all showdowns turning into that? I don't watch Marvel movies, you know this, but are they all doing it too? Like, have they forgotten how to do it? A good showdown? Not all showdown. Not all showdowns are Picard in a big green room with the guy with the face. Well, it's the same know, thing. In Insurrection. It, it's not all like that. They've all become but, that. When did this start? But showdowns are getting a, a little... Um, I mean, wrong, not it's, very let, it's a big letdown, yeah. They're bordering on unwatchable, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, can I get to the third character? Yeah, yeah, like sorry, to? by all means. Yeah, you, you, yeah, okay, here you go. David's third um, character. Orson Krennic, played by Ben Mendelsohn. Oh, yeah, he, he was, was a fine bad guy. He was a great bad guy. Yeah. He, he, was, he had ambition. He was sad when, he, when his credit was being taken by uh, CGI Peter Cushing. Oh, yeah, that's and he just wanted he just wanted to get recognized for his work and i you know as a working guy i appreciate that <laughs> i always want to get appreciated for my work in the office yeah. david's worked in a few installations yeah and he, he knows how it feels um yeah a few projects and you know when when it gets taken by uh somebody else you know, no it's... listen i'm on board for what's his name ben mendelson i think he's uh, he's probably my favorite uh, new contributor in the movie yeah i wanted to say felicity jones just because i want to tear her open and eat her like a fucking magnum she's so boring she just has no like in this, maybe, maybe. they directed her that one. I bet in but real I life she's I a really hoot. Seen her in anything else. I have this fantasy that in real life she's a real party to be with. Yeah, have you seen her in anything else though? Just the movie where Stephen Hawking can't walk. <laughs> oh, oh, she was the wife in that, was she? She, she was the reason that he lost the will to live <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> to be honest, I can't really remember her from that film. <laughs> That's All I'm thinking about is Eddie Red. <laughs> That's the movie where Stephen Hawking decides he looked good in lingerie. Oh, oh, I feel pretty. Oh, I feel like that's a different film. <laughs> that different film? Okay, anyway. I really wanted to like Felicity Jones in this, but they gave her just a couple of key scenes that really ruined any chance. You know what I'm talking about. The heroic speech in the briefing room. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um... Because first of all, you have the heroic speech, which is just not the best. Second, you have the reactions. I think the reactions might have been the thing that torpedoed the ship. Because you have them sounding like Trey Parker and Matt Stone. They're all like, going, Yeah! Yeah! All right! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! 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 I mean, I'm not imagining things, am I? Is that basically what happened? Oh, there was one guy in the background that said, Hey, let her speak! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do you want to do? Oh! What are you, how are we gonna do it? <laughs> there was a line I was trying to remember from that scene on the way out, and I couldn't remember it. Was that the one, let her speak? Let, let the girl speak! <laughs> Something like that. I was I wanted to joke about that with you after and I couldn't remember. What about the other guy in the briefing? There's some guy in the briefing, he's got this stupid voice and every time he talked, we fucking laughed. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what he sounded like, but there's one guy in the briefing who just sounded like a fucking Muppet. Yeah. And this is why I really wish you could walk home with a Blu-ray after you've paid to see the film, because there's so many bits I just want to quickly revisit. I don't want to go to the cinema and see this movie again. This will be the first Star Wars since Attack of the Clones that I don't see twice in the cinema. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Did so, you see, it, see Attack of the Clones twice? No, no, no. no I, I, we went you there. saw Revenge of the Sith twice? I saw Revenge of the Sith twice, but that was because of my breakdown voucher. So... Oh, yeah, well... Yeah. You gotta cash those things in. You get a free movie, you might as well go see it again. Exactly. But yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah well, I guess, you know. What I wanted to talk about, really. Because yeah. you made a point, you talk, you said something to me. I think it was on that night. Yeah. It might have been a few days before, maybe. It might have been, no, I can't really remember. And it was completely but wrong. You said that I don't like foreign actors. Oh, okay. Do you remember what I mean? And I don't know whether it was in relation to... Uh, Diego Luna, okay. or it was just about something else. But well, you did bitch I'm, about them at some point. I'm, look, I don't. Li I'm starting to think that you're right, but I don't. <laughs> I don't dislike foreign actors because they're foreign. I dislike foreign actors because they keep casting them in things, and they can't speak properly. <laughs> they can't speak proper <laughs> English. It doesn't sound like they're acting properly. Like <laughs> Diego Luna, every time he talks, he's just uh, talking under his breath. He's just talking like this. He's just <laughs> You know, he's trying to explain things that are happening in the movie. Like, he's explaining the plan and stuff. It's kind of it's crucial. Just, it's crucial info. Just under his breath. Yeah, we need to you know, know what's uh, being said. Yeah. Agent, 
you gotta come with me, Jin. You know, we're is gonna it? we're gonna go to, into the. Uh... He does the Antonio <laughs> Banderas thing. He's like, hey, listen, I've been fighting the Empire since I was six years old. Okay. Yeah, what's next? It's like, well, listen. I can't understand anything you're saying. It's making it very hard to follow the plot, and it's <laughs> very, making it very hard to follow all these stupid names that they've been given as well. Yeah, calm down, I Diego. Know, Cass- I don't know if Diego Luna was the one saying everyone's names, but I couldn't fucking understand him. How does the Spanish guy <laughs> say Saul Guerrero? Yeah, the Saul Guerrero. Guerrero. You'll know what to do with you. Okay, they you were know. saying Saul Guerrero a lot. I thought it was a single word. Saul oh, Guerrero. <laughs> Saul Guerrero. <laughs> you know, that doesn't work as a single word. Saul Guerrero. <laughs> Saul Guerrero. No. That's the thing. Like, he was just mumbling it all the entire time. I couldn't understand what they were saying. Yeah. I mean, it sounded stupid when Diego Luna was saying it. I mean, <laughs> also, in this list of characters that I emailed to myself, I put Forrest Whitaker where the character's name was, and I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at the list, and I was like, oh. No, I'm pretty Forrest sure they Whitaker did that in all, the, in all the marketing material, they did that as well. They just did Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker. Who you talking about? Forrest Whitaker. Oh, if it didn't get the picture. Yeah, um, so I don't know if I dislike foreign actors. Maybe I do, because Listen, I, I, didn't, I don't like the lady from Westworld. I have gotten up to episode 5 of Westworld. Oh, are you enjoying it? Started re-watching it. I am enjoying it. I heard that it gets a little shitty after episode 5. But, uh, yeah. It's not a bad show, but it's just not the show we, I thought we were getting. Fair I, enough. I, I but yeah, I still don't a, like it. a theme park breakdown show, and instead we get all this stuff. But I, want, I don't want to spoil it anymore for The you. roller coasters fly off the uh, rails. And... I mean... Yeah, no, I don't like her, because it doesn't sound like she's acting. It sounds like she's reading a script. I, I'm accepting of these new foreign actors, because I know it's what has to happen now. I've, they, there's, there's no such thing as just casting anymore. Now it's... We have X number of... I don't we're complaining. It's just a thing that I've noticed. You know, it's pretty obvious now. We have to cast every colour of the rainbow in a it's show. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. People that are casting are good at their jobs. But it's absolutely a thing. And it can be a little frustrating when you know English <laughs> and someone else doesn't. And you have to sit through them, kind of, you know, talking about blah, 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 blah. He's giving very important plot details, but he's doing it to himself. And nobody understands him. <laughs> because we just have... It's like, I know you didn't see Warcraft, the Warcraft movie, but yeah. the main guy is the guy from the Vikings. So yeah. he has a stupid Norwegian accent or some shit. Yeah. And so he's trying to, he's acting like, uh, Loth- I think it was Lothar. Yeah. He's trying to be Andrew and Lothar, and he's like... Oh, but, 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 but. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's gonna take me another saying anything properly because I'm 30 well, he's, not a, he's not a terrible actor but like I couldn't understand most of what he was saying either I'm 30 I'm an old man it's gonna take me another 5 to 10 years to deprogram some of the stereotypes I have in my head like so the first time we see a Frenchman in Star Wars it's gonna feel like a complete joke yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, where there, are the French people coming you from you got one of the French jokes we make uh-huh. where did Diego Luna come from yeah what planet is he from Spanish planet exactly it's, it's, it's just Spanish gonna take planet. us a while to to acclimatize <laughs> and and then we'll be fine I'm sure. another thing is people just the awkward kind of people yeah you know they're, they're casting all these awkward guys Ooh. being oh who was awkward in this movie who was the most awkward uh, Bodhi was pretty awkward alright cause like that's the second Bodhi, we the get pilot. you know do you feel like we're not far from getting Martin Freeman in a Star Wars film wow uh, okay yeah I'm a shuttle pilot I guess uh, that's gonna be fucking annoying well see that's I don't I mean, he's awkward, but, like, I mean awkward so much that you can't understand. Like, because my main example is Eddie Redmayne in this new Harry Potter film that came out. Or Mr. Gambino in The Martian. They're all too no, no, awkward. No, no, no. <laughs> well, see, I'm just talking about oh, okay, sorry. awkwardness that impedes acting and, you know, pronunciation and stuff. Oh, Because okay. Eddie Redmayne in this Harry right. Potter film, yeah, okay. he's talking about all these things that have weird names... Because he's, he's got all these creatures, right? It's about yeah. fantastic beasts and where to find them. Oh. And he's the guy with all the fantastic beasts. And he's telling everyone else what the names of the beasts are and what species the beasts are. But he's doing it like this. And he's just... Uh, oh, this is a... Uh, and like a shit I couldn't film. understand a word that anyone said in this film. Yeah. In the Harry Potter film. <laughs> 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 I just don't like Eddie Redmayne, okay? I just want to come out and say it. You're not Fuck a fan Eddie of Redmayne. Eddie. You don't like Eddie he's Redmayne? He's a piece of shit. He's a piece of shit. He's an awkward piece of shit. I can't understand a word he's saying. I couldn't understand a word in that Harry Potter film. Yeah. I mean, it was just... You know, it was, uh, whatever. It was, <laughs> it was okay. Okay. But, All right. It was boring. <laughs> it was boring. Anyway, I want to go through the plot of Rogue One because I feel like we're missing a few things. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So we start on the planet Lamu. Is now, that... tell me tell me you remembered that one because that one was a really re- memorable planet. I remember Odu. 
or Edu? Or Edu. Edu? Yuck. Or Jeddah. Was it Jeddah or Edu? Oh, Jeddah's where Forest Whitaker lives. Or Scarif. <laughs> Scarif is where the plans live. Oh, you know what? I'm Actually, I'm I do remember name. some of these. Uh, yeah, Scarif was where the plans were. I remember that. But here's the problem. Everyone was saying Scarif. It's like we complained about already. They just give you the planet names at the start for no reason. When you yeah. when you don't need them. Yeah, I only remember them because they were saying it in relation to the plot yeah. that I was watching. Yeah. Anyway, so Galen Erso is the scientist. He's down on the planet Lamu. Yeah. All right. And then Krennic comes down in his shuttle. It's a big, it's a big grassy planet. And one thing I really want to uh, hit on in terms of fan service here. Yeah. They've they've got blue milk on their little ranch. Where <laughs> the fuck is the blue milk coming from? Big like, blue cows. Is it blue, big blue cows that also live on Tatooine? Or do they import it to Tatooine? <laughs> we don't know enough about blue milk to really know what why. What is blue milk? Well, you know, I mean... Is it some synthetic shit that they just send to every planet? They probably It's probably just to just add water kind of nutrient. Like, I mean, you've got... You've got little, like the muffins? You've got Daisy Ridley, add powder to Daisy water. Daisy Ridley's muffins. You get yeah. instant muffins. And the yep. blue milk is probably the same thing. You probably just, like, toss a bit of this in there. And it tastes delicious and gives you all your nutrients. Okay, so it's just a galactic standard for, you know, yeah, that's, that's growing wonderful. kids. <laughs> I think I know what you're going to complain about next, though. I want to say it. All right, you say it. Because I'm sure you know what I'm going to say. Yeah, I know exactly what okay, you're going to say. Okay, they're on this lush green planet. It's, you know, beautiful sweeping plains. And it's got, like, the... It, I mean, it wasn't that beautiful, but it's, they got, like, the mossy rocks and shit on the shore. Yeah. Anyway, it's a green planet. So they've got this farm, and they've got these big structures outside the farm. Which I'm pretty sure it's very well established that these structures, which look exactly the same as the ones in episode 4, these are moisture evaporators. Yeah. They collect moisture from the atmosphere. Yeah. And, um... There was a lot of fucking moisture on that planet. There was clouds <laughs> everywhere. Was, everything was green. They were on a fucking shore, well, weren't they? I don't there know. There was if I water just, there, wasn't there? I don't know if I just thought this in your general direction in the cinema, or if I leaned in and said it to you, but just imagine how much more more would be, like... If you're in a water world... Yeah, no, you did say that. Well, it's an easy source of water. Like, you don't have to dig a canal or do any irrigation. There's just... not, it's not an easy source of water. <laughs> in Star Wars, well, How is. is it an easy source of water? Well, okay, if it works well enough in Tunisia, in Star Wars, to, like, farm moisture for a living, then as a supplementary sort... A sustainable source of green of green water <laughs> on a green planet, then, yeah, I, uh, there's no reason you wouldn't have I... it. Look, I'm sure there's way easier ways to it's get gonna, water. No, it's going to be going down to the seaside with a bucket and carrying it up and then desalinating it. I still feel like that would be easier. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Well, I, because I feel like a moisture evaporator, it's <laughs> collecting such little <laughs> amounts of moisture. Are we the wrong people to go see Star Wars movies? I mean, maybe. in the first I five minutes, like we're Wars like, why would you bother having a moisture evaporator on an ocean planet? And I, I don't feel like I'm being petty, because I know the only reason they put it there was because it's <laughs> the same thing as in episode four, and people will go, oh, Moisture evaporators! Do, do you want to know? <laughs> Look, it's like in episode four! The only time I felt any emotion in episode two was when the old guy is describing how Shmi Skywalker used to like to go out in the mornings and pick mushrooms from the evaporators. And I just felt so bad because I'm thinking of her going out there, noony, noony, noo, and she's gone out there for some these delicious mushrooms, and then the sand people, the mushrooms? they snag her. Yeah. I kind of feel bad about that. Isn't that sad? She was just up for some, mu for some, for some early morning mushrooms and. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> Is that oh. part of the film? Okay, so Krennic lands his shuttle about 15 miles away from the <laughs> from the homestead. I don't yeah. know why he walks that entire way. He's in a fucking ship. <laughs> anyway, it, he lands really far, that away. far away. Because I don't remember. It was pretty far. It was far away enough that it looked stupid. Yeah. I mean, it looked dramatic. Is what it looked like. It looked like, you know, it looked like a film. But he yeah. should have just landed a little bit closer. <clears throat> and then for some reason, the mother. Like sends the kid away. He sends Jen away. Why? No, no, no. The dad sends Jen away, doesn't he? See, I don't remember. No. <laughs> I don't no, remember. Scotty. I no, remember Scotty, the mother sends Jen away. She says, "Go on, Jen. Go hide in the fucking hole." Yeah. And then the mother goes and grabs a blaster and tries to fight like ten stormtroopers. <laughs> yeah, not really tactical. Remember for that the mother, bit? Is it? Well, remember that bit, Scotty? It's. I mean, Rogue One is like a lot of good old-fashioned sitcoms from the 80s, the mother is usually dead. Well, I thought it was very convenient for the main character to be an orphan. Um, 
not for her, but yeah, very convenient. <laughs> it's convenient for the story, it's convenient for, for, you for all me. the people. <laughs> for all the Star Wars fans watching who want something familiar. Yeah. In another orphan story in Star Wars. So hang on a minute. The sequence this of is events a new here. kind of Star Wars. No, Scotty, this is a new kind of Star Wars film. I'm sorry. <laughs> go on. Yeah, anyway. No, 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 no. Hang on. So, so the mother tries to nail the stormtroopers. She gets killed. Um, uh, also, in the first, like the first three shots or something, like blaster shots in that um, in that sequence. Did you? Were they really muted? I don't remember. I felt like they were like really weird sounding. Like I couldn't hear them properly. <laughs> Uh, yeah. There's something weird about the, the audio in the cinema, maybe, but... Sometimes I wonder if the surround sound's not working, or if they just don't have it. I think they forgot to turn it on there, and they were like, oh, shit, the rest of this film's gonna sound like shit if we don't turn it on. It's kind of weird how Forrest Whitaker just turns up and rescues her, though. Out of the... It is a bit weird that Forrest Whitaker lives about five minutes away. He pulls her out of the septic tank. He heard... Like... I guess, uh, I guess Liam Neeson must have sent it. I keep calling him Liam Neeson, but like, he didn't look that much like Liam Neeson. He doesn't look like him that much at all. <laughs> yeah, he looks a little bit like him. He looks, yeah. Sorry, Mads Mickelson. Oh, oh Mads, Mads Mickelson. Mi- yeah. Anyway, Mads Mickelson must have sent Forrest Whitaker a message before he went outside that said, can you pick up my daughter? <laughs> I'm going to be busy. Can you pick up my daughter? And so Jin's sitting in the hole with her iPod and then Forrest Whitaker comes and says, come on! Come on, Jin! We gotta be rebels! And that's all the, like, the backstory that we get. And then she's just in the prison van. And then she's just in the prison van. I, I feel like she needs a little more backstory to that. Like, they tried a little bit later on when they meet Saw Gerrera again. Well, yeah, but they have flashbacks in this movie to try and make you care more about her, but... Uh, I don't know. Also, yeah, she had a really convenient flashback at one point. Where she was just dreaming and she just, like... Was that in this film? <laughs> You should give every director, like, only a couple of flashback tokens, and once he's used them, that's it. No more. I feel like the flashback in uh, Force Awakens was good, at least, because um, she was having, like, a Force vision. Well, yeah, that was a Force vision. That wasn't really a... It was great. ...a flashback as such. it it serves the same purpose as a flashback. Oh, yeah, they tried to build up some significance with her necklace, with a crystal, but really, did that ever matter? Oh, and then nothing happened, yeah. It didn't save her life. She didn't hold it up at the end to try and, like, Nothing happened with that crystal. ...the tidal wave. (laughs) <laughs> the thing, <laughs> the thing about this movie, I think it probably it's probably because of all the reshoots. Yeah. That um, and I'm gonna misuse a phrase here, but just because I want to say it, there's a lot of hanging chads in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm misusing that phrase. I'm doing it deliberately. Fine. <laughs> there's a lot of hang- there's a lot of uh, you know story elements. Yeah. There would be a Chekhov's gun if they ever went back to it, but it's not. It's just a hanging chad. <laughs> and her necklace is one of them. Yeah, but like. The- Fuck! I mean, why do we care about your necklace? Like, what's I the... assumed. I thought she was going to use thought, it to like, build a lightsaber or something. I thought, like, <laughs> at some point in the film, I was like, they're probably going to use that necklace because they keep talking about the crystals powering the Death Star, which is another thing that annoys me. But they yeah. keep talking about the Jedi crystals used to power the Death Star. She probably has to like shove that in the command console to send the message, like power the fucking thing. Yeah, like, oh no, we've got using, no power. They must be using those crystals to power stuff. Yeah, how do we send the message? Oh, and she's like, oh, and she jams a crystal in there and then sends the planes oh, and then I she gets the... shot in the back or something. I mean, you're expecting yeah, something and then, like that. Yeah, the message goes up and it's a final sacrifice, you know. Basically, that but, necklace gets ten minutes of screen time and it boils down to, no, she just likes it. <laughs> she just likes the necklace a lot. Its only purpose is, uh, fucking... Donnie Yen meets her because of it, because he's like, oh, well, you got a necklace! And it's also so you can buy a replica of it. I'm sure there is one by now. I'm sure this is, yeah, I'm sure you can buy that um, on Etsy. I'm sure people are making it on Etsy. So how do we feel about Forrest Whitaker's Shit. character? I think he served not enough purpose in this film. I'm going to guess that it's because of the reshoots. I'm, I'm calling but, him um, Rafiki from now on, that's his name. Um, Rafiki. I half expected him by the sound of his voice. Whenever he comes into the film, I'm expecting him to be like crawling on the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> Jin, it's me, Sogadana. I, 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 I could not take his fucking voice seriously at all. So you, you don't like Sogadana? Uh, well, I didn't get the As point. As a character? He's you don't got like robot him? legs. He's, he's, me and Paul were making a little shop of horrors jokes because he had like the oxygen mask. We, were, we thought he was going to be like... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was I just... Feel those jokes. I didn't really uh, think... I, I couldn't figure out what how he was being played. Was he kind of a funny character? 
he's like the old hero that sacrifices himself for no reason. He's also like the kind of the Yoda. I didn't really know what role he was filling, and he was just, I, at the end of the day, fuck him, you know? Fuck Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> fuck Forrest Whitaker. Exactly. I feel like Keith David could have done a very, a much better job. <laughs> I designed a system for gods. Yeah, that would have been amazing. Keith David as Saw Guerrero? Yeah. No, um... Not much of a character. Didn't really achieve anything. Died for no reason. No, I am done running, Jin! Yeah, what... What was he run, What was he done running from? He could have just walked down to the ship. His his. Mind... I know he was limping, but like just fucking. And and the interrogation squid, whatever it was. Oh look, there's there's a big hanging chad right there. I assume that had some sort of purpose later, like earlier on. Did that but... actually get the info out of Bodhi, or was it just there to like kind of mess with him? What info? And it didn't leave him in a coma either. The coma was kind of like, hey, snap out of it, Bodhi. We got to get out of jail. What info was uh, Saw Gerrera trying to get from Bodhi? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Using that thing. <laughs> I really don't remember. Is it and he's like, synopsis? this might make you insane. And then, yeah, the <gasps> pilot just doesn't listen for uh, about Is 10 seconds. Problem? And he's like, oh. He sounds like Sammy from Amy's Baking Company. The only problem is that uh, it will make you insane. If you came to eat to enjoy, then you should know what you like to eat, sir. Fuck you, sir. Go out, you motherfucker. <laughs> Are they implying that he used it and that's why he's so weird? What about that bit where uh, Saw Guerrero takes Felicity Jones over to the lake and says, eh, If you look in the water, you will see your father. And she's like, don't be ridiculous. And then he squishes his hands and then she looks down and there's no father's there. And she has that vision. Can we keep going with the storyline? Oh, like only only, the only if you really think it's helping, because I actually feel like it's dragging us down. <laughs> it's dragging us down? No, no, well, no skip ahead. Give me some synopsis, I David. the blue milk. Synopsis, okay. we don't need the whole plot. Come on. Next point, next point. Let's go. Let's get this bitch. Oh, well, I, f I feel like we have skipped over something, Scotty. There's great uh, fan service when they're walking around on... Uh, the fuck's the planet called? Yeah. Uh, Jeddah. Oh, Jeddah so is the planet with yeah. all, all the uh, force <clears throat> crystals and where Saw Gerrera lives. Yeah. Um, so they're walking through Moss... Planet. <laughs> Moss, <laughs> Moss, Island, uh, Moss Diego. The, the, the name of the city. Moss Angeles. Different. They called it Moss Angeles. It was kind of a throwback. Moss Angeles. <laughs> Hang on. What? Well, Barney. Okay, yeah. That's another thing. <laughs> Fucking Jin, when she was in the uh, in the prison cell. Yeah. On. It was some sort of like fucking sand crawler or something, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. They're on some random planet. Called Wobani. <laughs> but oh yeah, there's like another planet for the prison pickup. Why are they on some random planet? That, that I didn't don't mean know. To be a different planet. <laughs> That's just where she was at, at her sort of in her trajectory. That's just where she. They went. introduced that, and it was used for about two seconds. It's so they could sell the Wobani That's... action figure. <laughs> you get a ball. <laughs> the action figure. <laughs> Why did they sell Star Wars <laughs> planets? That'd be great. The big basketball. You gotta collect them all. They're like marbles. Anyway, so they're walking around on the fucking planet. Uh, yeah. They're in the streets. And they fucking run into the guys from the Moss Eisley Cantina. The, oh, yeah. um, I have a destined in, in 12 systems. I mean, I haven't been watching these other reviews you've been talking about. Are the other people getting off on this? Do they like it or do they hate it? Well, every, all the ones that I've watched, pretty much all the reviews that I watched were like, uh, didn't really like the film oh, that okay. much. Oh, okay. Oh. And didn't like the fan service. I mean, that, that fan service slash cameo thing doesn't really get a reading on my, my uh, thing because... I'm holding up a, a gadget, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm like pretending I've got a computer. No, um... Yeah. I don't really have an opinion either way because it's not implausible that they could be there. I guess, maybe. It was unnecessary. Well... I mean... How many days was this before... Uh, New Hope? I don't know. They don't see... Again, they don't establish that. Because did they take the Concorde from this planet to... <laughs> Here's I mean, the thing. I don't know. It's we've, very convenient that they were there and then they just went straight to Tatooine. We've talked about this with like the humor in Force Awakens. They have a scene or a setup and they have a joke, a situation, and it's detectable for people like us. And then what they have to do is make it obvious for the... I don't want to be an elitist here, but the stupid people in the audience. And so you could do more of this stuff in the background and have it be more subtle. But to get the lowest common denominator, you kind of really have, have to, to drive it home. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like a, a bunch of people watching this probably wouldn't even get that because they don't pay that much attention to the old Star Wars films. It's just like, yeah. oh, Star Wars. Yeah, I'll go see it. You know. I mean, the, the other big cameo 
of that nature in this film, as in a cameo that doesn't actually matter, is um, the two droids, you know, C-3PO and R2-D2. Now, classic C-3PO. Again, R2-D2 they could have just been cameo. in the background somewhere doing nothing. It wouldn't have bothered me. But they, they could have been to... standing in the background at the at the briefing. Yeah. They could have been standing next to fucking uh, Jimmy Smith. Yeah. But, but they uh... had to have them foreground, front and center. I think one of them said something, actually. Does he? They both say something. <laughs> I mean, it gets... Like, they're showing the ships flying off, and then they pan back to C-3PO and R2-D2, standing there like it's a fucking main menu screen. Oh, yeah, well, hang on. Right in the foreground. Wait a minute. Why is C-3PO so, like, haughty about ships taking off in a hangar bay? Oh, I can't believe human beings are still... It's a hangar bay! It's what they do! I can't, re- I can't remember what exactly he says, but it's completely pointless. It's like... Oh, oh, oh I hate like flying! They're off on another fucking adventure, aren't they? Spaceships <laughs> are so stupid! <laughs> Spaceships are stupid and dumb, R2-D2. Oh, God! <laughs> Thank honest, God! Me, Anthony Daniels, is getting paid to... <laughs> I'm being kind of harsh, because to be honest, I don't remember what he says in that scene, but it's... It's, it's just... pointless, and I wish Anthony da- Daniels would just fucking die already so he can <laughs> stop with the fucking cameos. I don't want him in the next fucking Star Wars film. <laughs> episode 8. He doesn't need to be in Episode 8. He really does He doesn't. will be, but I hope, he just, I hope he's not. Does anyone like C-3PO? Honestly. <laughs> Even in the old films, like, he was C-3PO, like, he's alright, but, like, does he, we don't need more of him, do we? Um, I'd like him more if he wasn't such a prick in real life. You don't like Anthony Daniels? Apparently he's very mean to Kenny Baker, well, was very mean to Kenny Baker. <laughs> I bet he was the one that pushed him. <laughs> Wait, how did Kenny Baker, how did Kenny Baker die? I can't <laughs> How did Kenny Baker die? He died in that uh, accident. No, he just got old. He's 80. Dwarves don't live for that long. I mean, how much longer have we got Warwick Davis? And by the way, did Warwick Davis play all of the tiny soldiers in this movie? Warwick Davis did p- play that guy with the big mouth. Yes! I knew it. He did, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, there's only like two midgets. I mean, you gotta, I mean, the whole you gotta thing, get them. It's the most hilarious thing about Star Wars. It's the great dirty secret is that in the old days, they'd pay these dwarves to get someone cheap. To, to play the, the toaster or the, the, the Ewok. But now, yeah. because they're so famous, they have to, like, pay big money to get these ex-performing dwarves back into the saddle and, like, make them be the star dwarf. So Because it's like, oh, holy shit, they got Warwick Davis for this role? <laughs> He's like the big money, the big ticket dwarf. Uh, oh, David's he reading. died... <laughs> David's reading Elms. during my big dwarf rant. Sorry, yeah, and I'm just... Scott is going to put up a picture of Kenny Baker here, but he just looks like beef jerky. <laughs> What's wrong with him? <laughs> no, I'm just looking at a picture of him. He just like looks like a big leather face. He's a big know. salted ham. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So these, ca- yeah, those cameos, um, just feel completely unnecessary. I like slumped in my seat when uh, the fucking guys from the cantina showed up. Yeah. It was just like, oh, f- oh, this is what we're doing. Oh, that really. was the moment where you did that. I was trying to remember that where... That was the moment. That was the moment where I was like, fuck it. Honestly, I was less bothered by it was that either one. That, look, it was either that or it was... No, it wasn't. But um, the other thing I want to talk about with all this fan service yeah. is the uh, the big... Probably the most expensive thing in the film, which was uh, CGI oh. Peter Cushing. Is he fan service? I feel like he was like he, like he was very. He fit in the story, yeah, but he didn't need to be there. Well, I mean, okay, it, it, where do you draw the line? You don't need to make the movie. <laughs> we didn't. Yeah, we, but we didn't need the movie. I don't know. Look, uh, uh, I mean, the main point in the Grand Moff Tarkin being in this film is that it was just weird. It was a little odd. It was. Kind and of... it didn't look good enough to make it worth it. I don't like. It's I mean, so they hard always to... Have to. They always have to try it. It's so obviously. hard to judge without the movie in front of me. I, th- it, my gut told me like a third of the shots worked, but that's the nature of CG. Like sometimes it's good and sometimes it's like. Whoa. <laughs> it was. Like... There were certain points where I just kind of ignored it and just got tried to get into the film, what... and it kind of worked. What is that movie with Tom Hanks in the snow in the train? The CG one. Uh, the Polar Express. Some of the shots look like Polar Express. Other shots look like the Toy Fixer from Toy Story 2. Some um, of them look like Gollum from it just, uh, it never, Lord of the Rings. A yeah. lot of the time it didn't really look right. Actually, although watching it the first time, kind of just taking off my cynical hat for a minute, it, his voice bothered me more than the visuals. It just didn't sound that much like Peter Cushing. 
And you can find an yes, impersonator. It was just a guy doing. A... Yeah. You can go on YouTube now and find an impersonator for anybody. I mean, anybody. And they couldn't have found a better. Apparently, it was. Uh, I don't know what the guy looks like who actually played him. I'm going to find that out right now, okay. actually. Oh, but yeah. The, the guy who played him was also doing the voice, and he was also standing in. Uh, oh, okay. Probably with, all, probably with all the dots in his face. And I'm assuming, uh, I mean, pong, yeah. again, we're very much in spoilers territory here, but I might as well bring it up. Princess Leia also had an actress playing her, and like, with a, yeah. twi with a Twitter and everything, saying, I'm so glad everybody knows my secret now. Yes, I played Leia in the movie, and, um... Well, you didn't really, did you? <laughs> See, I mean, well, how... how no, I don't know if you really did. How are they defining this, playing these people? Are they doing the Lupita Bongo thing with the dots on the face and the camera rigs and the L.A. Noir, or what's the what's the technology here? No, no, the because L.A. Noir was... Uh, oh, sitting in front of a heap of cameras, oh, okay. and basically doing it was basically like a um, yeah. the connect, you know, measuring the distance between the camera and the yeah. You know what the Lupita person? Bongo method uh, is? They have the dots in the face, and then they have a camera like stuck to their head that follows them around. They actually have more than one camera. They have like three cameras. So there's one here. I'm doing it now. Oh no! Look, I'm Lupita Bongo. And then they get the camera. On the, they get like three angles or something, and they run around the set and act it all out, and then use that as reference later on or whatever. You know, you say Lupita Bongo so much that I can't remember what her name is. <laughs> Lupita Bongo. Um. No, it's Lupita Nyong'o. Before we just complain more about Tarkin, because there's some things, you know, we could we could talk about there. Um. Yeah. As far as cameos slash... I mean, there's not... See, Tarkin's not a cameo. He's an actual character in the movie. But yeah, he's, he's an actual character. Yeah, there's but, people but, from other movies showing up. Jimmy Smith's. They give this the music... Jimmy Smith reveal was a bit weird because I thought they were just going to show him for the one shot and then they just completely ignored him. But well, they had he this did show musical, up later on. They had a musical flourish, like he was a dear old friend returning after so long, and it was like actually I never really cared about Jimmy Smith. It felt a bit weird. It felt a bit weird. It was like I never really... look, we got Jimmy Smith. <laughs> it's like it couldn't have been that hard to get him. What was he? <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh my god. He played the Smith. repentant ex-gangbanger on Sons of Anarchy for a couple of years. I'm pretty sure it wasn't that hard to get him. I feel like anyone from the, from hey. the prequels isn't that big a get for the... Uh... Hey, Gemma. Hey, you gotta tell me what's going on with Jax, Gemma. Look, I'm gonna take care of your kids, Gemma. And, um, I mean... Although I'm glad, I'm glad he was in it. No, 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 I'm glad too. He did belong I in like it because he gets mentioned. And he... I mean, if you're gonna have Leia, you might as well have the old man. <laughs> Five minutes before his plane leaves and he gets wiped off the map. Oh, look. I have to return no, I gotta, to Alderaan. I gotta go back to Alderaan. Yeah, and... <laughs> and you know, here's this thing. All these years I've been joking about the classic shot of uh, Jimmy Smith sitting down for breakfast, drinking his coffee, and the Death Star, like, eclipses the sun, and he spits the coffee out, and that's how he gets killed. Yeah. I'm f I actually got my Death Star eclipse shot in this movie. I've been thinking about that for years. And was, I, When did that happen? It was, um... Uh, when it, what th planet was it on? I don't know. I think it's Jeddah, maybe. It was the first time they shoot the laser, right? Then. Yeah, yeah. It was over Jeddah then. No, no. I like, cool. I like right. a lot of that sort of um, imagery, so like fake nuclear tests and um, the way they portrayed the weapons. Death Star yeah. made it way more devastating than it. It was it was very cool the way they portrayed the Death Star. Well, it was so cool, because... even though it was only using like little spurts of its energy yeah well that's that's the scary thing and they're like it was what's, what's somehow it like it felt scarier than new a new hope almost well because he was just saying single reactor mode or whatever he says th they actually have a hand on the screen and it turns a dial and it says just a little taste and it goes to that level yeah. only and that and then they fired off it's like 10 nukes blowing up half the planet and it's yeah it's pretty good and stuff and then on the other end of the scale it's guy fieri's face <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Let's go to Flavor Town. No, but, um... but you have to be really eagle-eyed to see that because they don't want too many people really knowing. You know? Yeah, no, they're, they're... but it's good stuff. You don't want to let the proprietary uh, technology of the Death Star get out. Um, but I mean, you know, well presented. All that stuff's great. I like the Death Star and the seventies audio facilities they use to fire up the, the guns. And oh, the shots shit. of it like coming over the horizon on. Um, What's it, Scarif? Scarif, Was it the last one? Yep. Yeah. Like, what, right up close over the horizon, you know. Yep. On that, uh, yeah, that was really cool. Look, I've really got no visual complaints about the movie. I it's... think the Death Star was the best character in this uh, film. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the uh, other returning character? Who's the other returning character? The big man himself. Jimmy Smith. No, <laughs> who are you talking about? Darth Vader, Darth Vader. Oh, Darth Vader. Okay. <laughs> 
Smith. There's too many characters in this film. You forgot Darth Vader. I mean, remember Jimmy Smith. I think the second time they revealed him, they had another musical flow. Remember Jimmy Smith? In case you got him back. In case you've forgotten him. And so it is. Oh, that was his line. And so it is. Jimmy Smith. Anyway, Darth Vader shows up in the film. He's on his. He's on his. Mustafa planet. I don't know why he would. Why would you want to live there? Yeah, I don't really get the decision to let him live where he was brutally... I'm guessing it's kind of an eternal prank by the Emperor, kind of like, haha, guess what? Letting, letting him live there? That's or where like, your fortress that's where he chose to live? I don't know, I don't really get any of that, to be honest. Is he fi- Is he just smug about the fact that he finally got the high ground? He built a castle on the highest mountain on the planet? He's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, one. <laughs> you bastard. Sure, you... <laughs> You dumb bastard! Anyway, so he's up there, he's taking a bath, and Krennic shows oh, up. Oh yeah, it's I wasn't like... quite sure why he was making Darth Vader breathing sounds, even though he was in the hyperbaric chamber. Was he? Yeah, he wasn't in the suit yet. You could see his uh, head. <laughs> he, he didn't even have the, the breathing apparatus. Yeah. No, yeah, he wasn't he even... He didn't have the breathing apparatus then. Yeah. Uh, I guess, yeah, people really needed to, uh... They really needed to hammer home the fact that it I mean, I, I kind of want to... David, how do you feel about James Earl Jones still voicing this character? That's the thing that kind of got me, because... He look. It's good that he was voicing the character. Yeah. I'm glad they got him back. But he doesn't sound anything like Darth Vader anymore. I was listening to it was on YouTube, but it probably has been taken down by now. I was listening to it again, yeah. and like for the first few lines, he sounds like Darth Vader, kind of. But whenever he has to say something new that you're not expecting, he just sounds like a dumpy, dumpy, dumpy old man. Um. I'm old James L. Jones. Here I am. I'm, I'm in the recording <laughs> studio. I'm gonna do uh, well, no, Darth no, no. Vader. <laughs> he says things that you expect to hear Darth Vader say, but when he says things you don't expect him to say, like actually, no, his first line is "Director Critic." He sounds very funny. <laughs> then he says a line that sounds like it could have come from one of the old movies, and you're like, "Oh, it's Darth Vader, it's Darth Vader." But then he says, "I blew up an entire Imperial installation," and it just sounds kind of goofy, and it goes, it seesaws. But th- that's nothing new. Have you ever? We, you've seen the videos of the Star Wars VHS board game, haven't you? I think so, yeah. That was in the 90s, and he sounded funny back then, too. Because he's saying things like, You have two force tokens. Oh, yes, roll the dice, and, you know, I mean... <laughs> ah, look, you gotta get your token! <laughs> it's probably got less to do with the fact that he's 80, although that's definitely a factor. And more to do with the fact that he's just saying stuff you haven't heard him say before. Yeah, I mean... Don't everyone's choke. seen the ir- <laughs> Don't choke on your aspirations. Everyone's seen the original films so many times that, like, it's all ingrained into your brain, really, yeah. what he sounds like when he says stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, him saying different stuff, I guess, is, yeah. Nobody's got Jimmy Smith's ingrained in their mind. <laughs> like, whoa, Jimmy Smith's I Smith mean, I am kind of sticking up for the old man, because I would rather hear him be, like, 90 and fuck his lines up than hear somebody impersonating him. Good. Destroy any ship that leaves this cave. So, I mean, I, don't, a little bit I like really don't have a problem yeah. with Darth Vader's first scene. And as for his second scene, he's only in the film twice, but... Oh, one thing I want to say about the, the first scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you mentioned the joke, don't joke on your aspirations, uh, General. Oh, yeah, people are saying he wouldn't make that pun or it's not very serious, it's not very Darth vader or... Well, look, you know, you know when you're taking a shower and you just think of, like, you know, social situations that will never happen <laughs> or it's just, you're just sitting there you're just thinking about stupid stuff yeah he was sitting in his bath minding his own business he's probably got nothing to do because he's that's the back to bath where he doesn't you know he's feeling less pain because that stupid suit you know hurts yeah fucking Krennic makes him get out of the bath and get into his suit <laughs> he's got plenty of time to think about funny shit like this what, <laughs> in his suit? what else is he doing <laughs> I know oh look I, I don't find and so he th- makes a little pun and it's like he's always He's got a little bit of a sense of humor. It's not in Miles, the original film. It's not miles beyond him saying apologies accepted, Admiral Leader. Or yeah, whatever. exactly. That's like a <clears throat> that's a funny line. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind it. I mean, I you know, I, it's funny. Or, <laughs> welcome to my banquet. What does he say when? Uh, oh yeah, have a seat. We'd be honored. <laughs> he said we'd be honored <laughs> if you would say. join us. <laughs> and that's uh, is that after Hunt shoots him? <laughs> um. Yeah, that's after yeah, Han a, shoots yeah. him, like, oh, he takes yeah. the gun out of him. It would be honoured if you could join us. Oh, listen, I mean, I don't take Star Wars seriously enough that that line would bother me. So that's just me. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I, like, I can't remember who said that it was 
not in character, whether it was people who didn't like the film or did like the film. <laughs> because well, there seemed to be two very different uh, Is that when he's turning uh, around and force choking Ben Mendelssohn, his hand is like in full lepers, like thalilamide baby mode, is like all curled up like a rabbit that's he's been not really, over. He's not just doing the hand. Don't choke on your aspirin. What happened to your hand, man? For God's sakes. <laughs> but, I mean, that's. That, see, that bothered me more than the line. Yeah. And then the second scene that Darth Vader's in. Oh, the second scene, the classic. Very visually appealing. I mean, this is right at the end of the film. But again, it's still kind of like. Look, look, look. I enjoyed it. Look, it still kind of felt like the movie was jacking me off. <laughs> look, it, it is the most egregious. I mean, take all the other fan service in the movie, stack it up, and it still doesn't reach that much. Like, this was the, the most you're going to get in the movie. But. I Especially because I don't know, I don't know if, how well it slots into uh, well, a New Hope, like the way they transition into a New Hope. Uh, well, it needs to be there because at some point, the the historical record of Star Wars needs to be fixed so that the last Darth Vader we didn't that we saw isn't that pussy that we had over in the prequels no no i'm dead serious because <laughs> because yeah. that was it that, that, that it, now it is in the record it's in the official record it's for all time we now have that to say well, look, there definitely needed to be a scene with darth vader cutting up rebels like yeah. I, I think that that was a great addition to the film yeah but i don't know did it have to be on the in the little halls of that ship and did that ha ship was he moments away from grabbing the plans, even though we know he's not going to get the plans? And then the ship flies off and goes straight into A New Hope? Like... Well, look, the finer points you can argue about. I mean, like, f I think Darth Vader murdering rebels should have been in a better film than this. Probably deserved it. But at least they've done it now. <laughs> so that doesn't make this a better movie at all, but I kind of just... Just as a standalone... 30 seconds of film I have no right, problem with it I, I, call I think it a... generally I'm gonna I'm gonna speak yep. more generally about the plot yep the way they were advertising it as like a war movie and you know it's the whole point of the movie is to get the Death Star plans yeah I kind of thought it'd be a little more f not not fun but like kind of like a heist movie a heist movie yeah 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 or like a behind like a espionage movie or something well, that's what I was saying before about like and, the... yeah, they had the shots. They had the shots of Jin like in the, in the uh, imperial in the suit. suit. Yeah, the suit. Which didn't make it to the, didn't make it to the film. You know what didn't make it to the film? She didn't even say we're rebels, aren't we? I rebel. Yeah, no, what the that fuck? wasn't even in the film. <laughs> All the trailer stuff wasn't in the movie. No, I mean pretty much everything <clears throat> in the trailer as well. That's what I said before. Yeah. It's like the showdown wasn't all that much fun, and busting into the facility wasn't all that much fun. It was kind of... I yeah, know. I feel like, instead of the stupid shit with her father and, like, all that shit on the rainy planet, whatever the rainy planet was called, Yeah, th the stuff on the rainy planet just didn't do anything for me. Because they just walked, like, it was supposed to be, like, a moral decision made by, uh... What the hell's his name? <laughs> Cassian Andor? Yeah. <laughs> what is actually Diego Luna. Yeah. Like, he's supposed to have this moral decision where he's like, you know, it's my mission to, to kill the bad guy, but you know, maybe, I, maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> I don't give a shit about that. What, who cares? Yeah. And, you know, they need the dad to die. Oh, fuck, fuck the dad. Yeah, well, Please forget him. I mean, he doesn't need to be in the film. I, I understand that dilemma with um, Diego. I, I get it from his point of view, but from yeah, my point of view... You've been in that situation before, haven't you, Scotty? But no, 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 what I was going to say is me watching it, it didn't matter because I knew the father was going to get it anyway. <laughs> I, exactly. I knew that was going to be an unsatisfying plot thread regardless of the what thing... happened. So there was no suspense for me watching Diego have suspense over, do I do it or not? Do I kill him, motherfucker? Do I kill him? I was like, Look, I, the thing I about the dad... Yeah. The thing about the dad that I don't like about this film yeah. is that it kind of undermines what the... Uh, the kind of the point of the story was in uh, New Hope because I felt like the point of the story was that the Empire was very you know full of themselves and they didn't really think to they were too confident yeah. and they just left this glaring you know fault in the Death Star yeah. and they got fucked for it because they didn't really think about 
you know, the, the, the super weapon, you know, nobody, we're, we're the best. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it turns out that this is just this guy who's like, well, I'm just going to make it, I'm going to wire this up so that when they shoot down the exhaust pipe, it's going to blow up the entire thing. <laughs> no, it's... Do you know the expanded universe story for how the Death Star got made? How the Death Star got made? Well, you know, the plans and all that, who designed it? Uh, no. It's uh, designed by a guy called Bevel Lemelisk. And uh, the, em- yep. the Emperor had him, you know, basically working around the clock for him in his lab. And what the Emperor would do to keep him in line is it would kill him. And then in, in new and terrifyingly painful ways every time. And then clone him and bring him back to life and make him keep working for him. Ah, see, Scotty, this is just like in uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, where the Dominion <laughs> would have <laughs> the uh, the Wayuns, you know. Oh, they yeah, have yeah, work- Wayuns, yeah. They haven't work, and then when one of them dies, or if they fuck up, they die, and then they just bring in a new clone to and do I mean, the rest of the work. In the Star Wars Dark Forces game, you just drop down an elevator, go down a couple of other elevators, open up a thing, and you take the Death Star planes. They're just a big red computer chip. I mean, I don't know if that's the actual. <laughs> <laughs> this is too easy. Now to get to my ship. <laughs> I don't know if there's like book that's a little more complicated than that, but. I don't know. Old Carcatan. Here's the thing. Here's an awesome responsibility that comes with making a movie. No matter what the topic is, you kind of say, here's the story of when Kirk met Spock, or here's the story of how we got the Death Star plans. And And it would be pretty intimidating, because once you've done it and it's out there, that's it. That's the thing. This is how they got the plans, and this is, you know, what happens to Luke, and Han's dead now. You can't take that back. And, I mean, it's not the worst entry in a film series but this Rogue One thing it's now committed to film it's out there I don't know how I don't I, think it, I mean I don't think it's that good <laughs> I enjoyed it but I, I actually I just think for a war movie and I think they were maybe they were planning this uh, with the trailer like before they did all the reshoots and stuff but yeah. <clears throat> it just could have been more fun and it could have been more espionage like fucking Diego Luna j- dresses well, up as an imperial officer yeah and then he just runs around and then they start shooting at him like he doesn't actually do anything dressed up like an imperial officer why did he dress up (laughs) yeah i mean there's no reason for him to dress up what i was going to say before was think about how much this the the finale might have ripped your heart out watching all these people die if you'd liked them and if they'd had some scenes where you got to like them exactly but really i didn't give a shit about the mexican janitor or the pilot or diego or any of them (laughs) let's let him die yeah, because, I mean, like, they completely stripped the two Asians of any, like, fun that they had in the first ten minutes of the film. Yeah. Eventually, they were just... They, they, they flipped a switch. And then they just both died. It was just too damn serious. And none Yeah, of them and it was too to... serious, because they, they were, like, comic relief at and first. And none I, of them I seemed... It's, it's comic relief at first, and then they just died. None of them, these lemmings that they sent off to get the Death Star plans, particularly seemed to want to stay alive. Like, why, why wasn't yeah. Jin running to look for a ship at the end? <laughs> Check the landing pad! Oh, run over there. I mean, like, well, I thought they were both very mortally wounded. I don't know if, how mortally yeah, wounded. They weren't mortally. Yeah, they were still blast shot, but like, Why didn't she jab I, one of the crystal in her wounds? <laughs> <laughs> the magic healing crystal would make her fly away. It gives her yeah. force power. Let's surf away on my necklace. <sighs> I just think the movie could have been a really great heist movie. Yeah. It could yeah, have been a lot behind of the scenes and, like, trying to set up, like, not like Ocean's Eleven level but like a lot of behind the scenes trying to do stuff and then like maybe somebody sacrifices themselves to continue the mission yeah Yeah, some like they have to choose someone to die you know yeah stuff that rebels doing espionage would do as opposed to just a full frontal assault on a fucking there was nothing fun there was nothing fun like a trash compactor or anything yeah shit like that you (laughs) know that that, that really that just wasn't you know I don't know. And then they get up to the controls of the records, and there's this fucking skill tester that they have to do to get the <laughs> right record out. <laughs> what happened to fucking shelves? What? <laughs> Why do they have to look through the window <laughs> with the these joysticks? Archive. Yeah, yeah, it's up on level ten. <laughs> these big cylinder things that go up and down past the window that you can't see. I mean, I don't mind impractical machinery. I actually kind of don't mind that, but it was more getting to that point kind of bothered me. It was just yeah, where's the yeah. Where's the interest? Yeah, how, how come on the Death Star, how come the shield controls are on the opposite side well, it's of to, the thing? It's to stop pussies from messing with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, they just hide it back there so nobody knew it was there. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like nobody, none of the none of the stormtroopers are going to walk on that little platform. They can't even see anything, so their helmets are going to fall. My overarching f- uh, feel, feel maybe, maybe, of- maybe 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 Mads Mikkelsen put it there. <laughs> My feeling about the movie is that it's a, this is the word I remembered before. <clears throat> it feels sort of like watching a series of vignettes, like yep. little, little self-contained stories stitched together. It 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 was. Uh, Oh, what would be a cool idea for a scene? And they wrote those down and they put them in a movie. It, when I came out of the cinema, I said it was like watching. I feel like cool though. A master cut of video game cutscenes, like you watch all the Dark Forces ones or whatever. You know the one with the acting. Halo Two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When when somebody makes a movie out of cutscenes and it's incomplete and it's kind of you know jerky and doesn't have everything in it, it just it felt like watching that. It was the scenes yeah. of Star Wars. It was almost like watching deleted scenes that had been finished up. You know. <laughs> These are the scenes that you wanted to watch, like Darth Vader chopping people up or whatever. The rest of it, the bridging material, the body, the meat of the movie, was kind of not that present and not that much fun to sit through. Yeah, I mean, Jin just d- does a shitty speech, and then everyone's like, yeah, you know, the boss has said, no, we're going to go do it. You know, I mean, we're going to uh, do the mission. Action scenes were cool, you know, the dogfighting and stuff. That was all pretty well. The dogfighting was cool. Using the uh, the old footage of the pilots from A New Hope, that There's was a cool. a nice touch, you know. I like just the flashes of like, oh, wh- wait a minute, wasn't that... Yeah, yeah that's yeah. cool. I don't know about the Mon Calamari. Like, I like the Mon Calamari character. Like, General... <laughs> you know, the black uh, fish guy. Yeah, yeah. I liked him just as a character because, you know, he he... He stepped up to help the rebels on the planet. He seemed like the only guy who was listening, and he he went <laughs> yeah. to a lot of effort to help them. I was thinking about this but, before. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, there yeah. you go. No, I was just gonna say I was thinking about Spotswood from Team America. Does that floating chair meant to rip off Admiral Ackbar, or is it something else? <laughs> I think it probably is a little bit. Because I'm not <laughs> just thinking about it. Yeah, so that's the thing. Because I thought, I thought it was well. I don't know if it was well established, but I thought it was like kind of the idea was that the Mon Calamari didn't really join until later on. Yeah, I, I think because that's just... It, a, you know, why weren't they attacking the Death Star in the first movie? I you think know? it's just assumed. Well, I think... It's just assumed because, like... Yeah, and I, I like... You know, it's nostalgia, but it, I feel like it's misplaced nostalgia. Like, they're trying a little too hard, so they just shove the Mon Calamari in again. They're in The Force Awakens as well. Yeah. I feel like it's getting a little... Like, it was kind of like a background kind of character in uh, Return of the Jedi, and now they're they're leaning too hard on it. Yeah, they're like, look, it's the Mon Calamari again. It's like, is the whole rebellion run by fish people? It could have just as easily. <laughs> it's getting a little ridiculous. It could have just as easily been a human admiral, but then that would have to have been a human admiral of color, <laughs> like in that bloody briefing room scene. You know, I mean, look at that one mouthy bloody re- rebel, and she just happens to be black. <laughs> they were all mouthy. They were going doing a round table. They were a little too round. They could have made him. Look, they, could have made him <laughs> they could have made the admiral like any race. They could have made him like the guy with the three eyes. <laughs> I'm going to get back to that guy again. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, look. I mean, no, I just don't know. I, like, I get what the you're Mon saying. Calamari, I feel like I feel like the Mon Calamari are a bit of a joke, and they're leaning a bit too hard. And it's like putting Ewoks in your movie again. Like they didn't do that, but imagine if they did. You know. It's that thing about jerking you off in the cinema, though. Like, they assume, since everybody thinks It's a Trap is funny, that they want to see more fishmen. Yeah, and it's like, eh. I mean, that fish guy was cool, but don't really need it. You know, it's... It's kind of a nothing. It it's, out it's, of place. It feels a little out of place. It does, I guess, a little, but it, it's kind of a nothing thing for me. I mean, he's there, he's, a, he's an admiral. What, what do you do? <laughs> A few other opportunities that they missed that I thought they should have done yep. was um, with Donnie Yen, the uh, blind Asian guy. Yep. It could have just made him, like, yeah, he, they're um, sitting in the doorway and they're looking at the switch that's just fucking out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know why it's just a control panel in the middle of nowhere hmm. that controls the entire thing. Yeah. There's a switch. He could have just used the force, maybe. Like, because we already know he's, like, force sensitive or whatever. Like, it, there's no other way that he is knocking out uh <laughs> people yeah just yeah. say he's a fucking jedi just let him use the force it's like oh look at him use the force yeah oh shit ah. oh you still got sound yeah mate. <laughs> sorry i hit my elbow on the uh, mic arm <clears throat> um just let him use the fucking force and then when he dies let him fucking 
dissolve like I thought he was going to dissolve. I really thought he was going to fade out. Obviously. Why not just let him do that? Because he just died a meaningless death. And like, I get it, it's like a war movie, but like, yeah. you know. I thought that's what they were telegraphing. I really thought with all that focusing in on him, he was going to start dis disappearing in the, the big guy. That's the, the thing. Like, yeah. they, put so, they put so much effort into him talking about, oh, I love the Force, uh, the Force is in me. Yeah, and in uh, the last second, the Force doesn't the give force. a shit about him. It just turns his back on him. And then he just dies. Like, they build up all this stuff about him for nothing. Yeah. And I don't think that's them going, it's a war movie. You know, this is a cool war movie. Everyone dies. Nothing matters at all. I think it's just them not thinking about it. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Yeah, what's up? Because you know more about the Marvel movies than I do. When people okay. say about Star Wars, oh, well, I guess it's going to be like Marvel now. We're going to get one every year. Is that a... Are they casting aspersions on Marvel for being Marvel for being shit? Or are they saying, oh, they've got a lot to live up to? I think there's two Marvel movies every year at this point. But, um... <laughs> it's like... I think people are saying that, and it could mean either way. I think most people are meaning it like... I mean, for me, oh, it's... fuck, here we go. For me, it's not a high bar to aim for. You mean, that scene you showed me of that Marvel movie at the airport, where they're fighting and... and, and no, 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 no. Look, they're not saying it as, like, a cool thing. Like, look, I guess we're gonna get two movies every year, yeah! No, no, it's no, like, no, no. Oh, I mean, like, when that... Yeah, I mean, I mean are, are people liking this Marvel thing, this production line thing? I mean, this shit! Yeah. Uh, you showed me that scene, and Robert Downey look, Jr.'s head is like, hovering on in Iron that Man's scene, body. It's so look, bad. The movie that that scene is from, uh, Civil War, I actually didn't mind it. Was that unfinished scene. graphics? Were you showing me like a leaked version? I don't know. Maybe it was, or maybe I was just kind of in the moment. I didn't really care. It's trash. And I feel I feel weird saying that because uh, <laughs> I was, I'm so critical of Rogue One, <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't mind Civil War, but oh, it's um. So bad. No, I don't think anyone's saying, oh, look. No, a lot of people are saying, look, another Star Wars film every year. This is going to be great. Yeah. I'm not so optimistic. Like, just have the main ones every two every two, every two two years, yeah. Yeah. don't really care about it. Look, give me an Obi-Wan movie. That's all I care about. And just with it, I don't know if each one of these standalone movies is going to be made with the same ethos, because this time we've got a movie that leads directly into A New Hope, so we've got to have... Tarkin looked the same, and Princess Leia's all CG'd up. But this Han Solo movie, we're going to have this guy that looks like he's from Narcos playing Han Solo. And we're going to have Mr. Gambino. Fuck knows how that's going to turn out. Playing Lando. I mean... I mean... Well, I mean, I don't mind them re... Like, casting younger people to play. Like, I Well, I see, that. I don't mind that. I mean, it, it, it'll be less jarring to watch, but, I mean, is that what they're going to do? Are we going to get, like... Is he going to have a pound of makeup on to try and make him look more like the guy he's playing or what's the see I hope I'm worried see, maybe, now. maybe they are going to do the CGI thing because they're just they're announcing the actors but they're just going to be the voices and the motion well to me and it's going to CGI fucking Harrison Ford having CG and, uh, having CG layer at the end of the film like that it was almost like she looked at the camera and said you're fucked now this is what you're going to get this is what's happening from now on <laughs> it was trumpeting it's like it ending me. the film on a tech demo it's like exactly it just drains all the excitement out of you. It's like, oh, it's an Nvidia what? render. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. yeah. What, did we did we need that at the end? You know that good old fashioned human head demo where you, where it shows you all the great lighting on the human head model. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of felt like that. Well, the thing about Tarkin. Yeah. I saw a picture of it. It's like they put too much effort into the the tone, like the color of his face. Like, they gave him a big red June, like, old person nose. They look too colourful somehow. It, it's, I mean, look, I've been to a couple of funerals now. I've seen dead people. And it's the same effect. They, the attempt to add life where there is no life. I haven't cracked it yet. Sometimes it looks good. And sometimes not so good. I mean, I, I'm less critical of the Tarkin thing than a lot of people are being. Um, yeah. The impression I'm getting. But it's still not perfect. Um... I'd say it's only yeah, a third. It's just too much of a caricature. A caricature. Yeah. And it doesn't help that I, I've i seen scenes of him in Rebels, because it looked just like oh. Rebels. <laughs> <laughs> I it haven't seen that. the same as Rebels. I've only seen the first episode of Rebels because it was just so much like Aladdin, I thought, fuck this, I can't watch this crap. I haven't seen much of it. I just saw like a scene on YouTube of Tarkin, and it just stuck in my brain, like kind of like... I'm actually lying. I have seen the Darth Vader. That's like. Because there's some Darth mm -hmm. Vader episodes as well. Because uh, yeah. how many Jedi are in that show? Uh, too many. I that, mean, that, that's canon. 
I mean, it's like look, a cannon. I mean, Rebels, if it has any integrity, has to end with all of the characters being murdered, like Rogue One. Because, I mean, you, you can't have these clowns running around being, oh, the other Rebellion. It's just, you know. Yeah. What kind of oh, Jedi... I, oh. Forrest Whitaker's going to be voicing the uh, <laughs> Saw Gerrera in Rebels. Eesh. It's They're like, actually getting him in there to. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd cancel it. He wasn't very good. Hey, damn it! It's me, Funny Forest Whitaker. Look, it's me. Save the oh, rebellion. Save the dream. <laughs> why <Why'd> they? <laughs> God. <damn. laughs> oh, I just wanted to laugh so hard. It's me, Funny it's Forest Whitaker. Hey, hey, what oh, we're you? in the rebellion now. What will you do when they break you? He doesn't even say that in the movie, does he? Uh, he, uh, yeah, they cut a lot from the trailers. Honestly, most of the stuff in the trailers, it, like he didn't talk about the imperial flags, fly above every city. <laughs> so he, didn't, he didn't say that either. Damn it, it's me. You just oh, it's a, oh, the big tentacle beast. The only bad side is it might make him bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, are you playing? These clips? are the real lines. Like I've got the script in front of me. These are the playing, lines. No, you're playing sound bites from the cinema. <laughs> Rogue One script. I mean, I, I, was yeah. just, I was just comparing it to a bunch of video game cutscenes, right? Yeah. Now, that's not entirely an insult, because this is kind of the Star Wars I would prefer to be watching than the prequels. Like, I think those Jedi Knight cutscenes are a better Star Wars movie than the prequels were. I'd rather watch kitsch, stupid, retro Star Wars than, like, what the alternative could be. I mean, who knows what they could make now. It's a, it's a, a blank canvas. They could serve us up any crap. So, I mean, it could be worse. Yeah. It could be a lot worse Look, than it is. One point I'm not really optimistic about Han Solo. No, I'm I... definitely not optimistic about Boba Fett. Like, it's just these movies that just don't need to be made. These are characters that don't need a backstory, yeah. pretty much. But, I mean, I mean, Rogue One was a film that didn't need to be made. And these... uh, I mean... I know, these are even more movies that don't need to be made, is my point. Rogue One's like... I mean, no movie needs to be made, really, but oh, yeah. Rogue One is like, it's filling a hole, it's like, it's one of those things that's like, oh, how did they get the Death Star plans? Well, see, let's find see, out. See, yeah. that's barely a whole, like, that could be a 40-minute telly movie, or a fake documentary, or anything. It hour. also could have been a much better film. Like, it could have been, yeah, well, yeah, it could go, it could go way. out of the way. <laughs> I mean, Han Solo winning the Millennium Falcon in a card game could wind up being a better movie than I'm expecting, but I'm so worried it could so easily just, go the other like way. Like, that movie's just gonna end with, uh, that guy sitting back in the Millennium Falcon and going, uh, uh Chewie, uh, it's, uh, it's out of course for a uh, no, 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 you know what it's gonna <laughs> end with, David? It's gonna end with, uh, Lando watching Han Solo take off from the landing pad, and Lando looks at the camera and says, DOPE. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> because Leia says hope at the end of, uh... <laughs> oh. It's gonna be CGI, Billy D. Williams. Billy D. Williams. I would take, uh, like, a flashback sequence where it's old Billy D. Williams is all like, uh... Yeah, I well, remember... The whole the... film is just Billy D. Williams holding a, a photo of Harrison Ford. <laughs> I remember you, old friend. I'd much rather watch that, because I just like Billy D., and I, I reckon it's time he was shown some love. He wasn't in the Force Look, The start of the film is going to be Billy D. Williams sitting... At the he's funeral. The he's at the funeral what? of Han Solo, and he's like, damn. No, 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 no. Like, what, what happened to Cloud City? Is he in Cloud City? Is he yeah, still running Cloud City? They're holding the funeral on Cloud City. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Look, he's sitting back in his office After on the Cloud funeral. City. He's, dr he's sipping a cup of uh, tea. After the and funeral. And then the knock on the door. Oh. <laughs> you keep talking about the fucking funeral. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> knock on the door, and it's, uh, it's fucking... I guess it's Leia. Yeah. She's like, oh, Billy I mean, Billy Joe Williams, hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Rick Harry Fisher. It's me. You don't look like Carrie Fisher at all. What happened? Hope. And then they share a little moment. Yeah. Even though did they, yeah, did they ever even talk to each other? I guess they did. They were on the they were on the uh, Millennium Falcon when they were looking for Luke. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, and they had the whole plan to rescue Han. Yeah. Right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I guess they were friends. And uh, and then they have the flashback because he finds out. Hmm. Uh, I guess they could just send a message to him. I'm not saying it would be good. I'm just saying I'd much... I mean, if we're going to have bad and kitsch, then let's really go all the way with it. At least have it be funny. Because Rogue One tended far too much towards the serious. The only funny parts were K2SO and... Forrest uh, Whitaker. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker wasn't meant to be funny. Well, but, that's, a, pro I mean, that's a big problem. 
the intentionally funny parts were K2SO and fucking Donnie Yen. But like, that that is a problem though, because the only funny parts were this robot with no personality and just completely straight faced, like, just... It, it has to have some humor in it. Yeah. Movies are boring when there's no humor. No, I agree entirely. It, but, and don't choke on your aspirations isn't enough to... to and, beat and the And there's cop. another fresh one coming after that one, or whatever he says. You know, he's, yeah. What? Oh, Who says that? Alan Tudyk is smacking one of the characters. And there's a fresh one coming up if you keep resisting or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they're in front of the... Um, <laughs> The Imperials. It's me. I'm swinging from the ceiling. Hello. I mean, uh, in my mind, that's how far as we enters. Gonna... That's how he enters the film. Is he crawls on the wall and says, "Jin, uh, it's been so many years." You am. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. It's me, first <laughs> Willie. Here we am. Can we put his face up while we do this, or are, we... <laughs> are you gonna have to put it up every time we can pretend to be first Willie? Um. <laughs> I mean, uh, what I... I really want out of the yeah. uh, out of the Star Wars stories, I guess. Yeah. An Obi Wan story, between episode yeah. three and episode four, just, just be here, just be fucking Ewan McGregor. Finally, get Ewan McGregor being in a good Star Wars movie, doing whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. Let him write it. <laughs> just fucking... it's, it's a survival story. He's surviving on Tatooine. Look, he's on Tatooine. He has to mediate a fucking. I don't care what he does. Yeah. He's mediating a fucking gang war between two hearts or some shit. Could be anything. He has to help a village. It's like fucking Mad Max. He has to help a village and where people are stealing their oil or something. Yeah, yeah. And he's just the lone... It's like a western. He goes into a town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah. Obi-Wan. I just let it be Obi-Wan. Western. I would... I know. I would legit love that. I hope some marketing guy is fucking, thinking of that. He walks into a town on Tatooine. It's not Mos Eisley or whatever. It's some, some other town. Yeah. And he just gets to be the guy. Being a Jedi, being a badass. Yep. And he can't even be a Jedi Ooh, because if he pulls his lightsaber out, he'll get found out by somebody. No, but he has to because he has to do the thing. Well, yeah, at the near the end, like, the stakes get pushed and he's got to pull the well, lightsaber out. Near the end, just throughout the entire film. No, <laughs> I'm fine, whatever, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, but no, no, look, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, that, that's the only Star Wars film that I want besides the rest of the fucking uh, new trilogy <laughs> because I wanted to see that. No, I agree. That's the thing. Even with the kind of so-so story of the Starkiller base and stuff, the characters in The Force Awakens are just so much more interesting, and I want to learn more about them. Look, people heaped a bit of shit on that movie for structurally being the same, but it, it's not the same. Right? Look, Star I, Wars I didn't mean, have Luke killing his I... dad, right? In the yeah. first movie. It didn't have that. It is different. It, it, the same things... Are happening in the same points, but they're twisted. There's the other side of the coin. It's it a does rhyme take. a little bit. It is like a little bit like poetry. I really hate like in hindsight, I really hate Starkiller Base. It's just this no, no, laziest that, that was a, fucking. That was a bad move. Yeah, yeah. They could have just they could have pretended to build a new Death Star, right? And so all the rebels mobilize and like go to destroy it. It's not a, it's not there. And then they just like glass the fucking planet, like glass the rebel base or something. <laughs> just do anything like that. Yeah. They don't yeah. need a. Just having another Death Star weapon. was pretty stupid because it was so much bigger, and they still like managed to blow it up. Like that's a problem. Yeah, I reckon so they should have got their asses the stakes, kicked. The stakes were way too high for it to even feel real. Yeah. Like the Death Star, it's like it could blow up a planet. It's like, oh shit! This one could blow up ten planets. You. This could blow up ten planets. Uh, no, this no. Of a planet. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it just felt like overkill. Oh yeah, I said this to you in the cinema. Even sitting in the cinema the first time, like ex absorbing the film, is like, eh, all right. I said this to you when um when the Star Destroyer was hovering over a Jetta city. Yeah. Um, a Star Destroyer can't blow up a planet, but I'm pretty confident, just looking at the way it was hovering above the city, it could fuck some shit up, couldn't it? Like, I mean, they could probably start enough forest fires over a planet and just ruin every river and I mean it could really do some damage it doesn't need to be a start, uh, a death star does it no uh, the, like it could glass a planet or glass like a big con a part of the planet you is that know, what they do in Halo? got big weapons on it hey? is that what they do in Halo? yeah I'm calling it glassing a planet but it, oh, okay. right. well that is what they do in Halo and it's like you know using nukes because they call it like turning yep. it into glass yeah Yeah. Um, it's a wall but one thing I, one issue I have with that, 
when they blow up Jeddah, or like they blow up half of Jeddah or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They, they blow a big hole in Jeddah. Save the dream! That's where they're getting all their crystals. <laughs> Why are they blowing it up? Well, they've clearly mined all of the crystals that they need. <laughs> Did they just finish getting all the crystals? Because they it still looked like there were, there were a lot of ships going up and down. The crystals are really resilient and will still be in the rubble. Ah, uh, so they pick them out. That's one way to uh, yeah, sort but, through the chaff. Man, that makes Tarkin seem like a real prick, doesn't it? You know what? Fuck this planet. I'm done doing negotiations for mining rights. Blow the fucking thing up and we'll just take our crystals. He blows it up, yeah. Um, yeah, why does Forrest Whitaker just stand there? I'm done running. He sucks. What, from explosions? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like he's, like, saving everyone by standing there. It's like, don't, don't leave me behind. I'm going to slow you down. Save the rebellion. I'll, I'll hold them up. It's just a big explosion. You're going to die. <laughs> just run. You could have helped. You could have backed up the story about the hologram and shit. You know, a trailer I was watching today, not for a, a Star Wars movie, but, um, for, uh, what's it called? The one with Han Solo? No, uh, Harrison Ford. Blade Runner. I was watching a trailer for Blade Runner this morning. Um, yeah. The, what's it, the sequel? What's it called? Blade Runner 2000 something? 2049. Um, kind of, kind of crummy. Well, it's only a teaser trailer. Is I it mean, just it me, show much. Is it just me or is Ryan Gosling retarded? You don't like Ryan Gosling? He's a bit of a fucking... He's a bit of a is fool. Is his face? Yeah, he's a fool. He's, there's not much going on there. Do you think that they really need to use cue cards with him because he just can't remember anything? <laughs> it's just, Basically. He's got like a trainer behind the, the camera, like a dog. <laughs> but anyway... Using treats and stuff. I thought of a good name for it. They could call it Rogue Runner. <laughs> Rogue Runner. <laughs> yeah, Rogue, Rogue yeah. Runner. Yeah, it works for me. Alright. I had another... I was about to say something else. Oh shit, Fuck. sorry. Yeah, well, you keep, you keep uh, buttoning into my points. All the stuff with the hologram and, like, the weakness it built into the Death Star. That was a very long that, scene. That, it was very long. Like, I just, I don't care anything about the, the dad or the plan. Like, the him building the Death Star or anything to do with that. None of it hit at all. <laughs> and that was the whole middle third of the film. Uh, yeah. It was them talking about the hologram. It's like, why... The hologram just said that there was a weakness. It didn't even say what the weakness was. It's just like, go get the Death Star plans. Yeah, get the plans and, and you'll, you'll see find the weakness. The weakness. Like... <laughs> oh, yeah. What was the point of the, the hologram? Imagine how many stories is a Death Star? Like, a thousand decks or whatever? I mean, I mean, you've got to go through all those plans to find the thing, the weakness that he's just said is there? Yeah, he doesn't say... He says, like, the main reactor is really weak to blow it up. It'll blow up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now we oh, have to the find main a... reactor's going to blow up. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you know, God, yeah. no. I don't know. Everybody jokes about how easy it is to blow the Death Star, but think about that. You've got to find the two meter opening and find out about the thermal exhaust. And like, I mean, well, see, already... they get the Mon they get the Mon Calamari to look at that because they can have two of the pad thing. They look they look at both pads at the same time because they got the eyes on either side of their heads. They can look. <laughs> they can absorb more information. Ah. That's why they chose Rebellion. There's a information. Well, do we know what a Bothan is? Not yet, because that was in reference to the second. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, David, uh, somebody gonna, we kept talking about boffins. I was like, "Are you going to give it like a star rating or an out of ten or something?" Out of ten, uh, can I rate it against the other Star Wars films? Yeah, sure. You can put it in 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 a ranking somewhere. Okay, well, you do your out of ten because I got to think. I, about I was going to give it sixty-seven out of a hundred. Sixty. So six point seven out of ten. Uh, really? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, okay. I mean, it wasn't Quite terrible. honestly, I mean... It was still an enjoyable movie experience. It, I'm giving it lots of points for just the mechanics of, you know, they got up in the morning, they went to work, they made a movie, they assembled it. <laughs> okay. a, lot of, a lot of the workman-like aspects of it were pretty You know how well much done. they got paid for that? <laughs> <laughs> but just, I mean, there's so much... I mean, I could give it less when I really think about how much I was let down by the music and how not fun it was for a fun Star Wars film and all that stuff. So, 67 is my generous score. I'd probably go down to 55 if you really wanted to twist it my It is arm. pretty generous, 67. Is, uh, generous. Well, okay, anywhere between 55 and 67. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Uh... Anyway, what's, what's your... Uh... Just give it a 6, right? Just give it a 6. What's your ranking, David? Alright. Uh... See, I haven't really thought about this recently, either. Because I feel like The Force Awakens might have been knocked down a peg. But, well, by um... this? No, 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 not by... Oh. Definitely not by this. Yeah, but just from thinking about this and comparing oh. it to Force Awakens, oh. I kind of examined Force Awakens a little bit closer. To me, it's really it's simple. Like, uh, Old Star Wars, Force Awakens, prequels. 
This. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot to put this. I'm, see, I'm not, I'm not doing a ranking. I'm going to leave that to you. It's your shtick. Okay, look. Empire. A New Hope. Force Awakens. Jedi. This. This? Uh, three, two, one. <laughs> really? You know, to this day, I put two below um, Phantom Menace. See, I don't know. Cause I like, know. <laughs> How, when was the last time you watched them? Come on, be honest. Uh, I did... The Phantom Menace was on in the background recently, like when I was playing... Ro I was just playing Rocket League or something. Yeah. Yeah. And it was on TV. And I... Like, just listening to the dialogue, kind of, uh... Look, I forgot how bad it was. Look, it's not good. But, I mean, Attack of the Clones has all of the prequel problems and has the kind of disjointed, wouldn't it be cool if we did this sort of aspects to it? Okay, Attack of the Clones is really boring, but, like, some of the action scenes aren't terrible. Uh, like, yeah, they I'm, kind of are, I'm though. thinking of, like, the fun scenes from Attack of the Clones, and it's like, oh, they got, like, the chase scene in the city. That was kind of cool. Was it? And they had, like, the... The, I hate the, whole the thing. arena fight and the big creatures were cool <laughs> and uh yeah you're right uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, so much of that film was, two, <laughs> so much of those of, of two and three is let down by Anakin's stupid leather jacket like they were what <laughs> you don't like his leather jacket? what were they thinking oh look at me I've got pointy shoulders I'm Anakin yeah uh, they had Kamino but then I've watched Kamino recently and like everyone doesn't look like he's there at all I've expected it looks like he's just in a garage. <laughs> oh yeah, and that poser stunt double they have, the digital guy on the during the fight. When, yeah, when he's getting pulled around and stuff, like Oh no, it's good. Yeah. And shit like that. Oh. <laughs> oh. So so you can put Rogue One above the prequels then? Yeah, I mean it, gen yeah. generally it's a better film than any of those. Yeah. I definitely would have put it, wouldn't put it below any of the prequels. Yeah. As much as I enjoyed uh, Anakin choking had me as <laughs> Listen, he was pretty mad. <laughs> it's just, I feel like anything good about this film, about Rogue One, <laughs> it just feels like nostalgia, like it's just shoving nostalgia in my face. Like I enjoyed seeing death, like the Star Destroyers crash into each other and stuff. It's just because that's the thing that I liked when I was a kid and it was like, oh, D Star Destroyers, oh! <laughs> yeah. Oh, the Death Star, oh, oh, yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's stuff like that, just the good old... It's the simple stuff that works, like the Hammerhead frigate smashing the ships. Well, it's simple. I thought that was a really cool original idea, but it's from fucking Clone Wars or something. Oh, really? No. No, actually, it's the ship... Uh, it's the ship at the start of, um, Knights of, the old, Knights of the Old Republic. It's like the tutorial ship? I don't remember that. But you know okay. the tutorial ship when you're running around, and it's like, hey, uh, uh, sneak up on the on the bad guys uh, using your sneak ability. I know, I remember the level, I just don't remember that aspect of it. Ah, uh, well, that was the ship, anyway. And then they used it in Clone Wars or something oh, as, right. like, a ramming ship, and it's like, oh, well, th I thought that was a cool idea that the filmmakers had, but I guess they didn't. <laughs> I guess they just pulled it from somewhere else. Well, look, I mean, I think we've done a pretty thoughtful review. A lot more thoughtful. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Clearly more thoughtful than anything that that Mexican's gonna come up with. I mean... This guy doesn't like the Mexicans. No, like, I'm sorry. There's just a clip of him that I remember where he, where they're trying to talk about the Ghostbusters movie and he's, like, flipping out and then his friend is like, yes! It's just it's a very specific clip that I think... Yes! Yeah, he's like, he's, he's trying to sound so enthusiastic about it and he just doesn't and it just bothers me. That one character, Holtz, that can make all this fucking technology, she's actually the daughter of fucking Janine and Egon. That That's why sense. she's yeah. so fucking smart and can make all this technology in half a day. That would have been genius. And then all the Ghostbusters people could get behind that character and be like, oh, fucking all whoever. Right, yeah, that That's the fucking shit. Yes. You know, this is the fucking shit. Yes. You know. But anyway... Well, yeah, generally... Look, not a bad movie. If you are see, if you are going to see it, go watch it in a cinema or at a house with a really big screen. Um, don't don't just torrent it, because you, it won't have any chance of making the impression on you. I just worry about the uh, CGI, because it's just going to age it. Oh, it, it, yeah, definitely. It won't age well. And in ten years, we're going to see it, and we're going to go, what were they thinking? Well, I mean, you know, think of those shots in the prequels where they have, like, Yoda for too long. Like he'll be touching his head or something. 
or thinking. Yeah, it's like I'm a CGI character. Well, they, 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 I call it the CGI frown. You know when they when they they close their eyes too much. Think about Yoda. He's yeah. always a very boggly eyed, hello, cute character, and in the prequels, he's constantly frowning. It's all very serious. Well, he was boggly eyed because he was a Muppet. But, <laughs> but that's, that's I mean, the we look. Know why he was And it looked better. Now. I mean, like, it's not just Yoda. All these animated characters, their eyes and their teeth don't look right. I was looking at the picture of Leia before. Her teeth look so weird. And her eyes. It's just, the, the, the teeth and the eyes, for some reason, those are the things that look really terrifying. Well, the eyes is what you focus on when you look at a person. You know, like when you're... um. Well, then why am, I so, someone, it's like, why am I so oogged out by the teeth? Uh, maybe they're just not very good at teeth. I don't know. Some some poor sap at the uh, ILM had to fucking craft those teeth. Uh, after they'd done reshoots, because maybe she wasn't in the... Uh, <laughs> she, maybe she wasn't even in the film <laughs> before the reshoots. Some, uh, some poor guy had to do it fucking December 11th. <laughs> at midnight. <laughs> Oh, Re- shit. Hit render. Duh. Yeah, how much of this movie was hit render again? Do you think? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But anyway, look, I don't, is... I don't hate it. It's an alright. It is fun. I enjoyed it. Just one last thing. Yeah. Uh, that shot in the in the trailer where the Tie Fighter comes up while she's walking across the uh, platform. Why would they take that out? Appar- apparently, that was never even meant to be in the film. It was like a tech demo kind of thing. Really? It was just a test, like a visual test. <laughs> It was See, never actually in any edit of the film. I mean, even... I mean, you know... It looked about, cool. I mean, I thought that was really cool. But. Say this about Lucas. That the movies might not have been very good, but people would do tests and things, and they would... If they were a good test, they'd wind up in the movie. Like... Is that a... See, I don't think that's a better way of making a film. It's not a better shopping. way, but if when, when, <laughs> when somebody gives you gold, you... You do something with it. I mean, uh, you don't waste a good shot like a TIE fighter. Oh no, look out, it's a TIE fighter. How's she going to get out of this one? I guess it's because they couldn't think of an answer to that question. Yeah, like I'm just <laughs> thinking of the behind the scenes stuff from The Phantom Menace. And like people showing him, showing Lucas like, Oh, Mr. Lucas, look. Yeah, look at no, this uh, 3D I did. And it's like, oh, yeah. See, yeah, oh, you, you can go too far in that direction because that's what most of those movies was. Because it wasn't the director coming up with ideas for shots. It was just, hand it over to the animation team and they'll come up with 15 minutes of movie at a time. <laughs> and the rest of it will be what I filmed on the green screen stage, which has no connection to anything. Yeah, do you think uh, George Lucas even wrote any dialogue for Dex? <laughs> or it's just the animators had to do something because everyone's just sitting there fucking miming and like they had to figure something out. <laughs> Depends on what Dex. Oh shit, we gotta write this whole character's dialogue. We have to make him up. Fuck. <laughs> George Lucas didn't give us anything. <laughs> just fucking Ewan McGregor sitting in the garage. Behind a, uh, in front of a blue screen. So anyway, anyway that's so us reviewing the prequels. One. Yep. We could talk about the prequels for hours, but uh, we really we could. We you know you know how often we do it. Sometimes I'll just yeah have we a, do actually. I'll have a random podcast playing because my iTunes just puts them on sometimes, and I'll turn it up. <laughs> We're talking about the fucking We're talking about the prequels again. <laughs> ah fuck. We're really gonna put a moratorium on there. Well, you know, it's just uh, we're Star Wars fans, and um, we are. We are. I mean, I saw a lot of this stuff out of love, you know, I and mean, I do enjoy them, and I enjoyed this movie, but, I mean, I- I'm too thoughtful a person <coughs> not to sit here and nitpick a little, and for, and for me, that's part of the fun, it's not just going and being brainless and enjoying the movie, I have to have a bit of a reaction to it, otherwise I haven't fully gotten my enjoyment out of it. I feel like I didn't mind so much, like, we weren't even going to try this, but, uh, we won't. I just read so, I just read so many people saying, it is kind oh, of annoying, the characters in this were so good. They're so much better than The Force Awakens. Fucking oh. Daisy Ridley was like cardboard. Like, I hate that the what? most. You know, that's actually how you can tell somebody's not even thinking because that's just become the response to everything now. You watch a random fan film, which is eight minutes of a guy fighting in the woods, and the comments will be, this is so much better than The Force Awakens. And, like, they can't fight, and there's no dialogue, and there's nothing happening. And I it's feel like still, some people just had, yeah. It's still better than, like, professionals giving their fucking everything to a, to a movie. It's just like, no, fuck yourself. You're just being contrarian. Shut up. Some people just had some sort of grudge against The Force Awakens, whether it was because there was a black guy in it, or it was a girl. It's a combination. It's black guy, <laughs> girl, it and J.J. Abrams. The Hispanic uh, Poe Dameron. Is he oh, Hispanic? Everybody, everybody loves Poe. Come on, the jacket. The guy. Oscar Isaac. He's pretty Hispanic, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. He's some kind of Jew, isn't he? There were no, there were no white people in that film, basically. So it's yeah. like... Except Han Solo. So... Everyone... Yeah. 
I don't know. Anyway. This one, this film wasn't better than Force Awakens. This film, in, in absolutely no way was it better than Force Awakens. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh. Sorry to burst your bubbles. Well, no, I mean, if I just... Look, definitely the characters is what carried The Force Awakens, and it continues to. Yeah. And the characters is what let this film down. Yeah. And I, I go into I go into it for the characters, because I'm looking at character development and just relating with the characters and seeing what they do is the, the entirety of the movie. That's what watching a movie is, you know? That's watching yeah. a movie. Yeah. So I want to like the characters. Yep. Nope. I uh, and completely fuck, agree. Uh, uh, fuck Felicity Jones. <laughs> Look, you know, I, I really want to be on her side in all this. I don't want to blame her. I want to say she was given a bad, sort of, under a bony role, but it could be her fault. I don't know. I still want to fuck her. Okay, well, uh, looking forward to it's seeing uh, Forrest Whitaker in a 3D uh, cartoon. Yep. Felicity Jones! Uh, uh, uh. Felicity Jones, yeah. I love her in that movie with the disabled guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he's like, he can't even move and he's in the wheelchair. She's like, come on, Stephen, walk. And he's like, oh. yeah. all right. I'm going to edit this tonight, I guess. So, um, <laughs> take it easy, everybody. Thanks for uh, sitting through this little uh, gem. It makes us up for a lack of podcasts. Yeah. And, um, I guess we'll do it again next year. I mean, did we do it for Force Awakens? We did it. We actually did a review podcast. Okay. And it was no. I was listening to it the other day. It was pretty good. I don't know. I feel like if I like a film, it's harder to do a review because it's like, uh, yep. Yeah, well, that's uh, why it's we. Good. That's why we never <laughs> dubbed good movies. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just a negative guy. I just want to say negative things about things. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> it's David in brief. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all stupid idiots. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and movies don't need to be made. Bye. Alright, take it easy, guys. Bye. See you. Hey, David! It's me! Funny Forrest Whitaker! Look, it's me! Save the Rebellion! It's me! It's Forrest Whitaker! Hey! Hey! What oh, we're in the Rebellion now! What will you do when they break you? The Imperial flags fly above every city! David! It's me! It's Forrest a, Whitaker! Oh! The big tentacle beast! The only bad side is it might make you mad! Save the dream! Yeah. It's me! I'm swinging from the ceiling! Hello! I'm it's Forrest Whitaker! Jin! It's been so many years! Here I am! I'm back! I'm back! It's me, Forrest Whitaker! Oh, here I am! I'm done running! Don't! Don't leave me behind! I'm gonna slow you down! I mean, no movie needs to be made, really, but... Forrest Whitaker! Woo. If he didn't get the picture! Oh. My niggas keep the bit missiles! Hey. Waking your safe house like Whitaker!